Oh, brother, oh, brother, oh, brother. Let's get ready. Get your coffee in your system. A little coffee with course to start your day off. Folks, 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 team, 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 team. What is today? Thursday? Is it Thursday the 4th? I think today's Thursday the 4th. I'm not really sure. Monday is followed by Tuesday. Terry the 6th, followed by Wednesday. And I think... According to the Mayans after Wednesday comes to Thursday. I think it is Thursday. I'm I'm like 40% sure that today is Thursday, January 4th. And things are still not looking so bueno in the old equity market this year. You know, it keeps kind of like going down, which is a little bit suspect. Uh, so I want to talk about that. But I also want to talk about how if you've been bearish, you've just been making a bunch of money. So that's going to be fun. Want to get into that. Want to get into some recent updates with Apex. And basically, I just want to pat myself on the back because I was able to take out another $2,000 from the prop trading. So is it the 40000 that I should have been taking out? No. But I guess two is better than zero. Two is better than flat. Two is better than losing money. So I get, I don't know, it's not the 40 I needed, but hey, at least it's two. Yeah, I'm not going to complain at another $2,000. So I want to get into that. I want to get into 
some recent updates related to Bitcoin, the whole will he, won't he, are they going to prove it, are they not going to prove it, basically the full breakdown of Bitcoin ETF approval. We have some recent updates from some random analysts saying it's not going to get approved, then we have other analysts saying it is going to get approved, and then we have Fox reporting that, yeah, actually might be approved this Friday. But just so you know, in terms of the approval window, this is the first day from January 4th to January 10th there is a chance at approval. Like this is the time frame starting today. So that's kind of exciting. So I want to break all that down just so we're a little bit more in the know. But before we get it all to that, I wanted to start a little bit early just because I have a lot I want to say uh, in terms of other stories that don't necessarily relate to the market. But hey, it's the Matt Core Show. So I get to talk about whatever I want to talk about. I'm the one wearing the shirt that says harmful and dangerous. And when you have this shirt on, it's kind of your show. And obviously, we've just been talking about it a bit. So I just want to give everyone the official update of the Epstein list is out. The court decided to release it to the public with one name being redacted. And I want to talk about that. Uh, but just all the craziness and the memes and the jokes. Um, obviously, a lot of people are covering up the whole thing with a lot of humor right now, because if you think about it, um, the reason we're even talking about it is like actually super, super sad that we have absolutely disgusting animals on this planet, uh, which is something odd that like, you know, someone like Bill Gates just can't say, yeah, no, that guy's a disgusting animal. In fact, it's that easy anything related to Epstein and Epstein's Island, you say, oh, that guy is a disgusting animal. It's good thing that he's dead. And then, I, I don't know, I guess some of our world's elite and the people in power seem to have a very, very difficult time saying that. Matt, are you on the Epstein list? You know, I was going to brag a lot yesterday to you guys and be like, oh, I guarantee you that I'm not on the Epstein list. And I didn't because I was going to get nervous. I would have been like, oh, my, what's going on? But as of now, unless I happen to be the one redacted name, you're not going to be able to find my name on the list. So that's that's a positive. That's a good thing. Um, I don't know. The, the There's still a little bit of probability, though. A little bit of mm, shaky circumstances related the one redacted name. Might be me. I don't know. We'll have to see what the odds markets are at. But as of now, you are unable to find my name on that list. But obviously, times can change. Things can get crazy. So with all that being said, I wanted to start just because we have some important things to talk about. Stock futures rebound slightly after Nasdaq falls for fourth straight session. You know, I think they need the intern at CNBC to like up date this a little bit more rapidly. Dow futures tick higher as Wall Street tries to rebound from another losing session. When in reality, this is how things are looking this morning. The Nasdaq is actually getting clobbered right now. The SPY is not getting clobbered, but it's not looking so good. So I guess the intern is saying, hey, at least the Dow is good, but who cares about the Dow? No one cares about the Dow. So strange. But anyway, before we get into the market talk, the generate trading, the economy, this is the big news that's taking media by a storm, it's taking FinTwit by a storm, it's taking all of Twitter by farm by storm. Confidential Jeffrey Epstein documents unsealed by New York Corp. So, I mean, it's a couple of years coming at this point. I mean, didn't Epstein like commit suicide back in 2019? It's kind of odd that it took so many years for this to be public information. And the interesting thing, as I was alluding to, is a single name is redacted in a list of individuals who Giselle Maxwell allegedly directed underage girls to have not safe for work actions with. Uh, and everyone else, I guess, is now released. And there's a lot of talk about Bill Clinton. A lot of talk about Bill Clinton. And I'm just, who, who's your best vote on who this is? Who's your best vote here? Uh, a lot of people, if you read the comments, everyone's like, yo, this has to be Bill Gates. Everyone's number one, I guess, thought, vote on whatever this is, is Bill Gates. And I'm just curious, are you guys, you guys thinking that? You guys, is that your number one? Or do you think it's going to be like just some like rich, powerful person that like no one's really heard of and they somehow just got themselves to be like actually redacted? Bill Gates or Biden? Probably not Biden. I don't think by Gandhi. I don't know if Biden in any way has been like associated with this. He's like, I don't know, probably a little too old to be connected with this group. Um, well, definitely not Clinton because Clinton is like flat out named in this Prince Andrew. Well, think about that. How crazy is it that 
the person who got redacted is somehow more influential, powerful, or something's going on more than Prince Andrew and Bill Clinton above them because those two are actually named in the story, uh, but not this person. It's on page 204, as you can see from this post by Colin Rugg. A uh, lot, a lot, a lot of people thinking it's Bill Gates. And I wouldn't be that surprised in all reality because over the past couple of years, anytime an interviewer in front of Bill Gates brings up Epstein, it's always the most awkward response you could possibly get. The most, ob no, Hunter Biden, dude, they would have thrown that guy under the bus. I'm not going to put Hunter Biden above Bill Clinton and Prince Andrew. We're talking about a former president, obviously, Andrew and porn over there in Europe. Uh, I don't think anyone really cares about Hunter that much. Um, leading guest is Bill Gates. Maybe on the other side, it could be just someone that we don't know at all. Could just be like, a I don't know, some rich acolyte or some crap like that. Obama, that would be wild. Dude, I have no real reason or logic or anything to believe if it were Obama. But dude, what a twist this word would take. Um, if you see a little bit of it in Twitter, some of the... I know, you know, how sometimes the internet just takes things in. It goes like way, way too far. Um, there's some doctored, doctored things where people like, once again, this is 100% fictitious. It's a joke. It's not real. If you see anything about Epstein involving Stephen Hawking, you know, that genius dude who was in the wheelchair and like he figured out a lot of stuff about black holes. So there's doctored documents, not real. Once again, 100% parody of him being there and really like, I guess, interested in midgets is like what the fake, once again, parody documentation is saying. So if you're going to see, you might see it. It's all over Twitter today of people just making like some pretty, pretty crazy jokes related to Stephen Hawking. <laughs> oh man, the internet, the internet is just a wild beast. It's absolutely a wild beast. Dude, the Pope would be an interesting one. The Pope would be a crazy one. I don't think it's going to be the Pope, but Obama would be crazy. The Pope would be crazy. But anyway, this all released, and you can see even right now, Clinton is trending, and then actually so is Stephen Hawking. This is so mean to the dude. <laughs> like, you didn't do anything to deserve this. Oh, now it's not even loading. I cannot... Like, once again, I cannot clarify enough that this is all parody Stephen Hawking as soon as he touched down on Epstein Island. <laughs> That's way, way too loud. Good thing I didn't have the volume up, but Stephen Hawking when Epstein gave him a two for one kid special. Dude, it's so mean. Got thrown Stephen Hawking after seeing him on the Epstein list. It's so mean. Stephen Hawking footage at Epstein Island. What is wrong with the internet? It's so bad. The, the internet. Stephen Hawking jumping on the chair when he saw a 12. Dude, it's so bad. Once again, it was all doctored. The community notes are already on it. Stephen Hawking was not actually on any of the documents, but dude, the internet is just running with this one so, so hard. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Now back to the real parts of this story. Names in the Jeffrey Epstein court documents are unstealed. Epstein, I, I have various issues with CNBC, and this is one of them right here. Epstein killed himself in 2019 after being charged with child sex trafficking in New York federal court. Why not be honest and like say, put it in quotes or say like killed himself under suspicious circumstances. Like be a little bit more honest because like, Literally no one on this planet thinks he actually killed himself. Uh, so that's a little suspect. But what's interesting is Clinton was littered all over this. The Clinton name, Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton. It was listed everywhere. And actually they, but CNBC's here, instead of like really getting into what's going on with Clinton, which they like, they talked about Bill Clinton. They try to drag Donald Trump into it. And was Donald Trump listed in these documents? Yes. They were asking the witness, Hey, what's going on with Donald Trump? Did he ever, whatever he, they, the lady said, no, 
Uh, did he ever get a massage? She said no. So in this, was Donald Trump listed? Yes, he was in the documentation. And it was just the witness saying, no, nothing happened. So this was one of them, uh, Joanna and Jo, yeah, Joanna uh, was asked if she ever massaged Donald Trump, the former president, uh, who at one point was friends with Epstein. What's interesting is why would CNBC include this and not just her direct answer of saying no? I find that incredibly strange. And like, whatever, if you like Trump, if you don't like Trump, this is at a certain point, just good journalism. She was asked and you're reporting on it. So give the answer. Instead, they just talked, they included a different part of, I don't know if it's just the testimony, the definition, whatever the right legal jargon would be. Jeffrey said, great, we'll call up Trump and we'll go to, I don't recall the name of the casino, but we'll go to the casino, which she did say that they were talking about the casino and the potential connection. But why did CNBC not include the fact that the witness straight up said no? I, I just thought that was a little strange. And they're giving, I guess, Trump more discussion in here than Clinton, which he was all over the place. Clinton, dude, Clinton name is getting dragged right now. And honestly, for good reason. So the other interesting part of this story that's funny, and unlike the Hawking thing, this is actually real, is the current feud going on between Aaron Rodgers, obviously famous quarterback, and Jimmy Kimmel, a person who is very, very much falling off in terms of popularity. On Tuesday, New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers during an interview on ESPN's The Pat McAfee Show said in regard to the list of names, there's a lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, are really hoping this doesn't come out. I'll tell you what, if that list comes out, I definitely will be popping some sort of bottle. So once again, Aaron Rodgers said this on the Pat McAfee show. And just to give you a bit of context before we listen to the actual clip, what happened was his like a while ago, Aaron Rodgers was on the Pat McAfee show and he's like, yo, have you guys heard about this Epstein list? And Pat McAfee said, no, like, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, no, it's just all the people connected with them, crazy things. And then Jimmy Kimmel on his late night show, he came on and basically had commentary relating to the fact that the list is fake. It doesn't real. It's not real. It's like a tinfoil hat conspiracy thing. Like there's no such thing as a list, which is kind of weird because if you think about what that's actually like insinuating, it's like, oh, like we shouldn't potentially look into a list of pedophiles. Like, shouldn't we do that to you know protect some of like people in our world our lives like these kids like it was a really really weird vibe from Kimmel this was a while ago and then obviously very recently when it became obvious that we were going to actually get the list and it wasn't a conspiracy theory um this is what Aaron Rodgers had to say and then it became another thing with Jimmy Kimmel bring it up bring it up Foxy or somebody back seats there. on it we have Super Bowl 58 you'll see it the emblem put on the screen and then bring up 57 and 56 has something to do with the Epstein list that came out? <laughs> feels like, <laughs> feels like. That's supposed to be coming out soon. That's supposed to be coming out. Soon. Look, so this, this guy's been like waiting. This is the second time cellar. they're bringing it up. I've been in waiting in my wine <laughs> cellar for this thing. There's a lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, are really hoping that doesn't. Die. Die. So right there, Aaron Rodgers is hitting back at Jimmy Kimmel because Jimmy Kimmel made fun of him after the first time he brought it up. So like. I don't know. There's a couple things to track here. So Aaron Rodgers bought it up a while ago. Then Jimmy Kimmel on his show called him and like basically conspiracy theorists. And now that it's coming up, obviously AJ Hawk, a main member of the Pat McAfee show, just like was poking fun at it. And then Aaron Rodgers just kind of ran with it and saying, hey, Jimmy Kimmel probably doesn't want it to come out because like he'll be forced into protecting his buddies who are probably on this list or maybe Jimmy Kimmel's on it himself. Obviously, a little bit of tongue in cheek, a little bit of just like some comedy. And obviously, it's always a little bit awkward when a comedian can't take a joke, i.e. Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel, I really hope that doesn't... Die! 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 <laughs> All right. All right. Obviously, a <laughs> clip from this particular program was run on Jimmy Kimmel's show uh, whenever Aaron brought up the, the list and then Jimmy mocked him for it. Mm -hmm. Aaron has not forgotten about that. But here we are sitting right in front of that nice bottle of scotch. Mm -hmm. What do you say? I'm waiting to celebrate something. Oh, yeah. yeah something <laughs> He's awesome. been waiting That's for the that. That's the one. <laughs> you been waiting for hey, I'll tell you what. If that list comes out, I definitely will be popping, popping some sort of bottle. Hey, you've been calling for it for a few years now. Anyone else notice this? Oh, my God. Uh, All right. Oh, yeah. So you get the point there. We don't have to listen to it. But then right here, Jimmy Kimmel. This was on January 2nd, two days ago. Dear asshole with not, I guess, a, a weird typo. For the record, I have not met, 
flown with, visited, or had any contact whatsoever with Epstein, nor will you find my name on any list other than the clearly phony nonsense that soft-brained wackos like yourself can't seem to distinguish from reality. Your reckless words put my family in danger. Keep it up, and we'll debate the facts further in court. What's interesting is he just said he doesn't want the list to come out, not that he was going to be on it. So Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel obviously getting absolutely, like, like destroyed in these comments. Um, this top one was kind of interesting. Isn't that basically what you did with Trump and Russia? Made wild, unfounded accusations then that put him and his family in danger that had 87,000 likes. So obviously a lot of people saw it. Jimmy Kimmel not happy. The list is out. So once again, this is a real narrative related to the story, unlike the Stephen Hawking thing, which yes, is obviously hilarious, but also just not, it's just not based in fact. Um, so that's the crazy story as of yesterday, today, culturally what's going on in the world that's what everyone's talking about right now uh, but maybe uh, that's why i wanted to start it a little bit early to cover that story uh, and now we should probably bring it a little bit back to the market and i wanted to share this with you because in the world of the market uh the whole rich dad poor dad that finance book that we all read and the guy's a big real estate investor he came out with some crazy crazy commentary yesterday and at first I thought it was crazy. And now that I've thought about it enough, I truly think that it might be genius. And it might be the, I guess, mental framework we all continue with for the remainder of the year when it comes to the world of finance and money and how we should just think about it. Just let it seep in for a little bit. So this is what Rich, Robert Kiyosaki says. Rich dad, poor dad's author says he's $1.2 billion in debt because, quote unquote, if I go bust, the bank goes bust. Not my problem. I love it. I love it. So what this is saying is it doesn't pay to be a small time degenerate. You need to be such a large time degenerate that if you go bust, it's everyone's problem. If you keep things small and conservative and you go bust, that's on you. But if you're so big that you bring down other people, it very quickly becomes their problem. And is it the most moral thing? No, but it's also kind of right. Uh, big take this one simple trick. So uh, I guess the message of not only the day, the week, the month, but also the entire year is if you're going to be a degenerate, go, go full degenerate. Make it someone else's problem. All right. Speaking of problems, if this tab ever closes this is what happens when i have a gazillion and i don't know i have like this doubled up all the tabs that you see right there on my other screen i have even more tabs open so i get why it's a little bit slow but come on it's 2024 we should be able to handle some tabs anyway speaking of problems tech the magnificent seven have been under a little bit of pressure kramer says the market has momentarily fallen out of love with the magnificent seven so even though things are going down we all know the inverse kramer effect I think this is kind of actually going to save us. Hear me out for a second. Hear me out for one, one second here. Even though the market's getting smoked right now, the fact that Kramer came out with this, I think it's just a matter of time before we bounce and rip even higher because of course, Kramer's always going to be 100% wrong. So definitely looking to see if the inverse Kramer actually has an effect. Now, with respect to some of the things that are going down that actually could have a legitimate impact um, today for the remainder of the week, uh, early this morning, 8.15, we got the ADP non-farm employment change. Uh, private payrolls added 164,000 in December, beating expectations. So we're adding more jobs than expected which is actually representing a stronger economy. But re remember, we're in that upside down world of a good economic report is bad for the market because we're still actively fighting inflation. Don't forget that we're still cooking 50% above in excess of 50% above where we should be with respect to inflation. Our target's 2%. We're somewhere in the mid threes right now, depending on the source that you're looking at. So right now we're still in that upside down world of a good economic report pushes the market down. Bad economic reports have been pushing the market up. Will that last forever? No, it's just because of the current phase of monetary policy. But anyway, this morning, lower initial jobless claims than expected, 202 when they were expecting 216, and more employment added than expected. So both of these are good economic reports, which is sending the market down right now. And you can kind of see that right here in the futures market. You have the five minute, the 10 minute trending down. You can see that in the NASDAQ, the five minute, the 10 minute trending down. So it's the 30 minute on both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So 
that's part of the reason for the short-term negative movement. But also don't forget that when you zoom out, we've ripped so much that maybe it's not a fair question for us to ask, like, why is it coming down? A better question to probably ask is, why did it go up so much without really ever taking a break? Ever since late October to really the conclusion of the year to the second to last trading day, we just ripped. So this pullback, this isn't like a doomsday, like we all need to scream and the market's going to crash this year. No, look at what's going on. It's just a basic rudimentary pullback. No need to freak out. I mean, the cues ran from 342 to a new all-time high of 413. And now we're just pulling back a little bit and people are like, oh my God. The only time I would actually like on the daily chart to think that like, oh, maybe things are actually going bearish is if we get below and close below the 50 EMA. On the screen right now, this is technically the 48 EMA, but they're roughly going to be the same levels. It's I'm looking at this cloud. The cloud's bullish. The bulls are in control. The only time I would really think that that changes is if we get below and close below the 48 slash 50 EMA, kind of a more of a medium time frame type of a thing. So just want to give a little bit of context to the short term bullishness. Yesterday, there was a little bit of craziness at 2 p.m. At 2 p.m. with two hours to go in the trading day, we got the FOMC meeting minutes. This was not a new FOMC meeting. This was the meeting minutes from the December meeting. Uh, Fed officials in December saw rate cuts likely, but path highly uncertain minute show. So what this is saying is the meeting minutes kind of backed up and bolstered what we all already think. The fact that we are done with rate hikes and we'll probably go sideways for a little bit. But then the question is not only when are we going to start cutting rates, but how many rate cuts will there be this year? And that's the uncertainty. So no one really knows when we're going to start cutting the Fed fund rate and no one really knows how many we're going to have this year. The assumption is that they're going to start cutting rates this March. So just want to put that out there. But right now, Obviously, March is a good chunk of time away from where we are right now. So let's not like be bet in the entire farm on that actually happening. But according to the FOMC minutes and really what everyone's already been saying is probably no more Fed rate hike. So we're probably going to start going the other way. Oh, also, I want to add on there um, FinTwit and Reddit and the interwebs in general somehow is under this idea that cutting the Fed fund rate is immediately bullish. Historically, that is not true. From the 1960s up until 2019, 2020, the most recent Fed rate cycle, the start, like, I, and I'm talking about from the moment of the first rate cut, every single time from the 1960s up until recently, there's been at minimum a double digit drop in the market until it actually bottoms. So don't think that you need to be front running in your investment account, your long term account. You do not need to be front running. There, in fact, there's actually a multi-month window where you typically can just like wait, kind of calm down and see how things play out. So you don't need to front run it, especially with your long-term investments, at least according to history. Just want to share that with all of you. With respect to individual companies, we do have earnings. It's not earnings season. The only one that I think people will care about is Walgreens. That came out this morning. Walgreens posts earnings beat, but slashes quarterly dividend nearly in half. So it was a beat, but then obviously not the best news. So earnings per share was good. The revenue was good, but obviously with cutting the dividend, not so bueno. That tells you that maybe the, like, the financial circumstance for them is getting a little bit more tight. Uh, this is the newsletter. You can get it for free. MacCores.locals.com. It pops up in chat. It's pinned. It's in the description of the video. MacCores.locals.com. If you can't figure out how to spell it, you should be able to figure out how to find the link. But anyway, a free newsletter. You don't have to pay for this at all. I give it out every single weekend. Uh, a breakdown of like all the upcoming major macroeconomic events. So for example, today, Thursday, these were the ones that came out this morning. Uh, tomorrow, we're actually, it's the first Friday of a new month. So we're going to get the unemployment report. So this is all going down tomorrow. So tomorrow we're not starting at nine. We're going to be starting around 820 just so we can see what happens with the unemployment report, a very, very impactful macroeconomic event. Obviously, I give you the earnings. This section's a little bit weak right now just because we're not in earnings season. But what I would argue is most important is the seasonality. So this uh, right here, I give you three different things. The percentage of the time that the bulls have won. And if you want to know how much the bears have won, you take 100% and you subtract the number. So the bulls have won this particular day over the past 25 years, 60% of the time, which means the bears have won it 40% of the time. 
The profit factor for the bulls is 0.99. Uh, one is neutral. One means for every dollar you spent, you've gotten a dollar in return, as in you're perfectly neutral. So it's a slight loss and the bias is neutral. But then if you look at how this has actually played out over the past 25 years, this is the equity curve that is produced by buying it open and selling at close on this individual day. You could see for a good chunk of time, it did nothing. Then it was a bit bearish. Then it became a bit bullish. Then it became a bit bearish. So it's kind of just like netted out. So we've, in a weird sense, volatility gone nowhere on this particular day. So from a seasonal standpoint, I would say it's neutral. That doesn't mean I'm anticipating today to do nothing. It more so just means I don't know if the bulls or the bears have the upper hand. So I'm not using seasonality when it comes into my own thesis for trading today. And then to conclude the day tomorrow, uh, also just neutral. It sold off a little bit at first, probably 23 years ago. And then ever since then, just sideways, sideways, sideways. So this is all from um, just seasonality stuff. Once again, you get it for free in the newsletter. I also give you an update on the zero DTE strategy. Uh, if you guys are on locals, you probably got an email yesterday. And what I do is at the end of the day, I document all the trades from that day. So for the month of December, and it ended up going 34 for 37 units. And as of now on the month, it is five for five. So we've only had Tuesday and Wednesday for a trading day thus far. And it is at this point, you probably got the email yesterday, five for five. Uh, so crushing it, I'll cover that in a second. But before we get there, five things to know before that stock market bell opens today, Thursday, January 4th. I knew it at the start of the stream. I thought it was January the 4th. And look at that. I thought it was Thursday and here we are. All right. If this, dude, I have way too many tabs open. Way too many. I'm, I'm just a tab crazy person, you know? Uh, new year, new markets. It is new year, new markets, as in the markets are kind of going down. So this is the S&P 500 futures. Uh, this is the NASDAQ 100 futures down, down, obviously five minute, 10 minute, 30 minute. Uh, all three, except for the daily, are actually favoring, in terms of just the current trend, in the short term, clearly favoring the bears, which is definitely a, change of tune because recently it was just bullish 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 it was absolutely crazy waiting on economy to evolve so this is referring to the fomc meeting meeting minutes we're saying yeah we're pretty confident that we're not doing any more fed rate hikes but it's very uncertain of how many cuts and when those cuts will come this particular year kicking it up a gear general motors had its best year uh, there's a we could get into this but dan ives had some pretty good segments talking about tesla and byd and who's producing more and who's going to be popular in the ev market in china and all that good stuff we can get into more details oil prices have been all over the map because no one really seems to know what is or isn't happening in the Red Sea. But for my energy commodity traders out there, I do want to point out, yes, oil ever since the start of October, or excuse me, the conclusion of October has been going down, lower highs, lower lows. But I do want to point out a recent development that we now have a higher low. So recently it was all lower highs, lower lows, clearly a bearish trend. But recently, we now have, yes, still lower highs, but we have a higher low. So this is going to create some sort of like wedge structure. So this is what I'll be watching on oil. So not only this trend line breakout, but the push and hold above about 75, 76 to see what plays out there to see if another bullish wave comes in the world of oil. Uh, Xerox cuts, I mean, right there, cutting 50% of its workforce. This is a trend we've been seeing over the past two years of tech companies and now even some financial companies laying off their employees. It seems like not really Wall Street, I guess in a certain sense, Main Street, but like just a lot of the corporate forces, like they're understanding that some tough times might be coming ahead. So it seems like everyone's trying to like, I don't know, be a little bit more frugal with their spending. So that's kind of the, the TLDR of the crazy news going on with Epstein, what's happening with Jimmy Kimmel and Aaron Rodgers outside of the world of the market, but then also what's happening now with the market, looking at some of these daily charts uh, with the SPY right here, taking a bit of a breather. Am I bearish yet? No, obviously not. I'm not going to be bearish until we get below and close below like 460, 455, something like that. Tech. We know last year, the whole tech sector and really the S&P 500, everything was led higher by the Magnificent Seven, the top seven tech stocks that just ripped and ripped and ripped. The NASDAQ 100 gained 55% last year and the SPY was up 24% a majority, a high majority, the lion's share of the game came from the Magnificent Seven. We had seven individual companies dominating the entire stock market. Well, what happens is when they're going up and everything's looking good, yeah, everything looks good. But when those individual seven 
they have equivalent power to the downside as well. So they're not starting off the year on the best note. I mean, we had the Barclays analysts talking about how they're downgrading not only Apple, but the rest of the seven. And when stuff like that happens and you have people taking their profits, people getting a little bit scared, this is what happens. You have the queues vomiting from 413 all the way down to 397 in pre-market trading. So you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So even with that being said, though, obviously, uh, for a lot of November, a lot of December, I streamed it to you guys. The Discord saw it. A lot of money was made to the bullish upside. Well, to start off this year, I mean, granted, we're only two, two trading days in, but a decent amount of money has been made to the bearish downside. And that's exactly what this newsletter is. So when you sign up for locals, there's two things. Hang on, I got to sneeze. Every shot. <laughs> oh, man. Ow, that actually really hurt my back. My back still hurts like no other. I've been doing cupping and acupuncture, but something with like the muscles around my sacrum, like my, my, uh, my tailbone, dude, something like the, the lower back muscles. I mess them up squatting, oddly enough, on New Year's resolution day, January 1st. Um, but anyway, 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 anyway. When you sign up for Locals, there's two things. You could become a member, which is 100% free, or you could become a supporter. And when you become a supporter, you get access to premium posts and also you get access to the Goonie Discord. Now, for this time, for this month, you can be a supporter, the premium member, for free. Now, I guess my pitch to you is pretty simple. I know a lot of people, like when it comes to trading, they're like, okay, like, well, like you're trying to get money, blah, blah, blah. Like, here's what's happening. This service to become a supporter, you get all the premium posts, access to the Discord, private teachings on the weekend, access to my trades, access to other members' trades, good conversations, some gaming, some sports gambling, some just bullshitting. All of that is $30 a month. $30 a month or $300 for a year where you get basically two months. What I'm trying to prove to all of you at no risk to you is I'm giving you a month for free. No, there's no question about it. A month for free. And my thought is, oh, okay, if in one month I can help you generate more than $300 from your trading, that means you get the entire year for free. And then, so I give you a free month. If you in that month can make $300, great, sign up for the yearly membership. And then within the next year, which you got basically for free, then from there, if you get another $300, you could just keep rolling it forward and it never really cost you anything. So that's my mindset. To me, it's pretty obvious, like pretty obvious. Thus far, in the first two trading days, as I've shown everyone here, let me just scroll down uh, to all the pictures, right? Yesterday, January 3rd, January 3rd, there was a four out of five bearish signal. I called out a SPY call credit spread, a Q call credit spread. This was a two unit multiplier based on the strength. And then I explained my own trades. I sold SPX call credit spreads. I did two different chunks. And then I showed where I got out. I sold at 115, got out at 10, sold at 40, got out at five, which means that I personally made $800 yesterday. And thus far on the year, January 2nd and 3rd, I'm up uh, a realized $2,000. Or another way to say that is within two days, I almost paid for seven years worth of the service. So you, if you don't believe me, that's fine. That's exactly why I'm giving it away for free. So all that's in the description of the video. And if you want that access for free, just use the code 2024. 2024 will allow you to go from a member to a supporter for 100% free. You're not going to have to pay anything. And then like, I'm confident enough in my, really my own trading systems that within that month, you're going to get the money to pay for an entire year for free. So it's really inherently never going to cost you anything. So just wanted to share that with all of you. And we could talk about it later. If there's any questions, more than happy to get into it. A little bit later, I want to talk about Bitcoin and Fox and the ETF approval and what is or isn't happening. But for those of you paying attention to Bitcoin, it gets all, it got crazy, definitely at 6, 7 a.m. Uh, yesterday. Uh, there was a report that one analyst thinks there is not going to be an approval uh, and that sent things down. And basically it would have only sent it down a little bit. But right now with the rise of like leverage trading and these like perpetual contracts, as soon as it goes down a little, people get margin called and forces them to sell. So it gets very quickly out of hand. I mean, Bitcoin went from 45K all the way down to 40.6. And now we're all the way back up to 43.5. So it just shows you the craziness of leverage. And it was between um, about $400 million USD got liquidated uh, equivalently. 
And I mean, it lost about the crypto sphere was about five billion dollars of value within a couple of minutes. It was really crazy. But as you can see, it's already coming back. Now, Ethereum also trying to come back. Solana not coming back as much on a percentage basis. But my point in bringing these all up to you is Bitcoin pushing above its 48 EMA, Ethereum pushing above its 48 EMA, Solana pushing above its 48 EMA. So they're all fighting right now. Uh, they're definitely not anywhere close. Dude, look at this Solana vomit. This Solana went from 110 all the way down to 85. That is absolutely ridiculous. What's the Discord link? I tried the one in the descriptions and it says it's invalid. No. Is anyone else having that issue? Um, anyone? It worked. Wait, can someone else test that out and let me know? Uh, because that's not good. Obviously, it can't be shilling you guys something if the link doesn't work. Uh, can anyone else see? Uh, make sure you select monthly, not yearly for the promo. Yeah, because it's a free month. That makes sense. Um, it, are other people having that same issue? Because I need to fix that. Bob's having an issue. Is anyone else? Um... So it's working for you, Sean. Uh, Crabface is having diarrhea issues, which is related, but not exactly the same. Interesting. Uh, hang on. Let me see. MacCores.locals.com. I click on this. Nope. Well, you could also click on this giant Discord right here. This... This will work, this icon, if this, yeah, this brings up, yeah. So you could click on this giant icon over here, or if you're saying if you click on this, that should work as well. No, they both work. Uh, so Bob, if you're still having issues, feel free to reach out to me. Um, like DM me on whatever Twitter, Instagram or something, email me media at matthewcores.com and I'll like directly help you. But I think it should be good. Um, just make the icon a big ball sack. Can't miss it. That's, that's a suggestion for sure. Uh, I'll take that into consideration. We'll, we'll run that by, uh, the next team meeting for sure, for sure, for sure. I appreciate that. You know, no, no suggestions, a bad suggestion. But with all that being said, um, so we have a breakdown of the crazy news. We know what's going on in the market in the medium term and in the short term. And now let's see how degenerate we could actually be today. So I'm going to throw a poll up for you guys. I want to see if you guys are bullish or bearish. Um, any magnets today? We're going to see. But first, let me start this poll. Um, market at open. All right. Are you guys bullish today? Are you counting on the reversal or do you think that the trend will persist? Are you bearish? So as you guys are voting, um, I do want to, I guess, share a little bit of positive news. So you guys for a while now have seen me being like using Apex here, Apex, like the prop trading account. If you guys don't know what prop trading is, basically you do simulated trading, you pay to do a test and it's simulated trading, not real money. If you do well enough, they fund an account for you. And then if you trade well enough on a funded account, once again, with their money, then you can actually get money. So once in a while, I'll get questions of like, is it a scam? Like, can you actually get money? Um, as of yesterday, I have officially taken out another $2,000. So right here um, on one account, I previously took out 2,000. And then just recently, I took out another 2,000, just got approved. So yes, I have officially taken out $4,000 that I got from trading and I never had to risk my own money. Now, I want to be honest with you. The test is not easy to pass. And there are, because it's someone else's money, it, there are various rules of like drawdowns and this, like it, it's not an easy thing, but that's the trade-off. It's the fact that, well, yeah, it's not going to be easy because it's someone else's money. So to me, in my mind, this is the perfect in between of paper trading, risking nothing and getting nothing, or your own full account, risking all your own money. This is the nice in between where, yes, the rules are a little bit more stringent. I want to be completely honest about that. But think about the risk, which is literally just the cost to take the test. Uh, and speaking of the cost, I just wanted to show proof here that, yes, you can actually get money out. Um, the test right now, it's it ends tonight, the 80% off deal. 
basically, if you look at Apex, once again, just to be completely honest, they run three deals, 71% off, 80% off, 90% off. They rarely, obviously the 90% off is the best deal. They rarely run that one. Most commonly it's 71. Then every so often, if you're patient, you could get an 80 and then rarely there is a 90. Uh, but right now, if you want the 80% off deal, which the accounts that I do are 50 K. So it's uh 80% off 167. So it's about $33 to take the test to try to get funded. Um, and I just want to share that with you just because this ends in about 12 hours. That is pinned to the top of chat. It's in the description of the video. And to get the deal, you just use this weird thing. T P B M G L U S. So just wanted to share that with everyone before we really get going today, because this is my apex. Well, this is technically Ninja, but you can see I'm trading on my apex accounts. These are all my apex accounts. It's this PA one that I just took $2,000 out. So yesterday it was at 54.5 thousand. I took 2000 out that will be hitting my bank account. These other ones, 53, 53, 53. Uh, I'm working to pass the test. I have enough profit. I just need more trading days. And then I started one, two, three, four more yesterday where I trade all those and got about $400 and I'm trying to run it up to 53 K. So everyone that just starts with an apex is the one that I'm currently trying to pass the test on everyone that is a PA I've already passed the test on and we're talking about if I trade well I could actually get real money so in this moment in time I have one actual account that can truly earn me money and then I have these other ones cooking in the background trying to make them a PA account trying to pass the test and on the website you can see the test there's the FAQ and all that good jazz but for me of course, I want to make money and risk less. Like that's what every person really should be doing in the market is trying to make more money while risk less. Um, so I'm definitely a fan of it. All right. You guys voted 56% of you are bearish. 56% of you guys are bearish at market open. Let's see how this goes. New bar. This is the first bar of the day. And you are right. I probably should have just taken your trade. Without a doubt, I should have just taken your trade. Dingity ding, ding, ding. The casino is open. Best of luck to all. Play responsibly. If not, have fun. All right. I need to get a couple trades in myself to see if I can make some money here. All right. All right. Everyone calm down. We're calm, cool, collected. No reason to really freak out, right? All right, I'm waiting for the conclusion of just this first minute. Dude, you guys were right at first, but it looks like by the time this, we have 15 seconds, it looks like you might end up being a little bit wrong here, team. A little bit wrong. What are we doing? What are we doing? Are we coming right back down? Uh, seven buy stop by limit order submitted all right let's see if it pushes right here let's see if we could get our first trade out of the way easy peasy lemon squeezies first trade out of the way calm cool collected let's not do anything crazy first two trading days of the year were solid no reason to upset the roller coaster now you know, uh, order submitted. Or order canceled. Look at that. 125, 125, 125, 125, 125, 125, 125 times how many counts? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a thousand dollars right there. A thousand dollars in two minutes of trading, dude. I will take that every single day. If you make a thousand dollars a day, that's a quarter million dollars a year. And I worked about two minutes. Technically, all my real work was just setting up the buy. And this is what you could do on prop accounts. It's kind of a it's a, it's a different mindset of trading because of like you're trying to keep in track like all the rules to pass this test, like this, that, the other thing. Um, are you not taking our trades anymore? Dude, you guys were wrong. Would you take your trades right now? Well, technically it would have hit, but then blown out. I don't know. I want more confidence. Like I'll take your trades if you're more than like 60%, but you guys were at 56. Like, are you, like, are you trying to ruin my life? 
Is your copy trader built into Ninja Trader or a separate program? It's built into Ninja Trader, but it's at someone else's services. So you buy it and then it hooks into Ninja Trader. But no, like you guys, dude, new, new year, new me. And I'm not going to let you guys continue to trick me the way you have been historically. Changing the rules. How about this? When one of these accounts, 53, 53, 53, when I trade X amount more days, it will get approved and go over to real money. I'll allow one of the accounts to be your accounts and I'll do whatever you guys tell me to do. So I'll like a real money account where I could theoretically win. I'll, I'll let you guys do it. How about that? Uh, so, I mean, like right now, I mean, I guess I could give you a SIM account, but it doesn't really matter because it's a SIM account. Uh, but at, since it's over 3K in profit, I just need X amount more trading days and then it will theoretically be passed. And then when it goes over to real money, I'll let you guys trade one of them. And then we'll see. We'll see who's better. I'll, like, I'll trade against you guys. Like you guys could have one account. I'll trade my accounts and we'll see how things actually go. I think that's fair in between. Um, hey, I'm not even saying it has to be SIM. I'm saying it could be the real thing. Didn't we hit 17 in a row? You hit 15, but I don't know. I, I don't know. So, I mean, and actually, <laughs> I actually can't talk that much shit because uh, when I was showing you the, the withdrawals, that first 2000, that actually first 2000 was from you guys. That wasn't even mine. Like you, technically your account, I was able to withdraw money from before I even did my first withdrawal yesterday. So that's actually kind of crazy you bring up a valid point maybe i shouldn't be talking so much smack maybe i shouldn't be talking so much smack uh 89 hang on uh, ba -ba. uh hang on order submitted Uh, 70, I just want to make sure the right accounts are actually hooked up. Uh, because there's really no advantage for me like over trading on these other accounts when I already have enough profit. Order submitted. Let's go. Shit. Order canceled. Hello? Hello? Why is this still? What? Dude. Order filled. What happened there? Why were these accounts trading? What the fuck? I like had to pull the ripcord on it. That was sketchy. Uh, I mean, I guess it's fine that I still ended up making money, but you guys saw that it went way past the target and they were still live. Dude, this is why I think I really need to figure out my own code besides be on like real. I think it's obviously something iffy had to happen here with like, I place, I think it was because I placed the trade and then I unhooked it. So it's probably a user error. Like it's probably me. Cause like I put the trade on, like as in it was sitting there and then I unhooked it. So it was, to be fair, it was probably my fault, but that got sketchy. Um, so lost money on two of them, but on the other ones I made basically, I don't know, I'm up about 1.5K. 1.5K and I got lucky. So why push it? You know, that's good money. Up 1.5K a day. Like that's what, $375,000 a year when I'm playing a game on the internet? Dude, easy. Uh, we're just shutting it down. Do you want to say, no, it's a winning day. Why push my luck? You lo Yeah, I lost money on two of them. I lost 50 bucks, but the other ones made more. So, hey, it is what it is. Um, 2024, as you could tell from my beard, I'm attempting to be a lot more disciplined. To me, that's really what a beard signifies is a disciplined person. Um, so I'm trying to not... I think my issue a lot of the time is over trading. So I'm trying to not do it. I got my two trades in there. Bada bing, bada boom. Like, you know, I could push it and maybe make more money. But why? I could also then risk losing money. And that's the thing I obviously don't want to do. So I'm going to take my money. 
I did all my futures trades, you know, took out 2K from the system yesterday. So I've taken out 4K in total, made another 1.5 today. And hopefully the accounts stay alive to the point that they go from SIM to PA where it becomes real. And then they have all these rules. But eventually if you pass them, you could start taking money out. You know, calm, cool, collected. You know, that's what this beard's all about. Last year, 2023 was the year of Matt being a degenerate gunslinging cowboy of a trader. 2024, Matt's a bearded philosopher. This is the look of a guy who has pretty much all of life figured out. I mean, and you guys kind of knew it was already in me. How do you think I was able to give such good relationship advice? You already knew that somewhere within my being, there was a just a well-balanced, well-established, well-grounded human, and it's really just coming out with the beard. You know, it, it's just really, really coming out with the beard. Uh, your next step is to move to the suburbs. Dude, I'm going to break out some New Balance sneakers, start grilling, start mowing really cool patterns. You know, I'm really, I'm, I'm starting to find my stride as I head into my third decade of life this year. It'll, it'll be something. But hey, just because, just because I'm a bit more disciplined, that doesn't mean that we're not going to party as soon as I can load up this website. Oh, dude, this is going to take a while. Dude. Uh, I'm having dude, too many tabs, running too many tabs right now. Uh, obviously, obviously we could still party a little bit. There we go. Wall Street. Wall Street. Wall Street. Wall Street. Wall Street. Get an electric smoker. Probably. You're ending your third decade. Yeah. That is tech. Yeah, you're, you're right and I'm wrong. 100%. But anyway, see, that's just proof that right there, I still have things to learn. Right there. That's a good example of, hey, man, some things to still do. So the only other final thing I really need to do is sell some premium. And it's that exact premium selling strategy that I put in the Discord and give out the, the signals. Well, first, that's two different systems. One is a zero DTE premium selling strategy that's been crushing it. And then the other one, the more important one, is just like the signal on the day. Um, it doesn't fire every single day. Obviously, there's various things that have to be taken into account. Right now, we might be in the old the old razzle dazzle, the old switcheroo, because the five minute and the 10 minute are kind of trying to flip on the other side of its cloud. The 30 minutes still looking a bit weak. If you look at the NASDAQ, same thing pushing up, not so much on the 10 minute. So tech on a relative basis to the S&P 500, definitely a bit more weak this morning, but let's see how this all plays out. Um, while we're waiting for it to play out, let's see what's going on in the options market. Please take this with a grain of salt because we're only 20 minutes into the trading day, so a lot can happen. Uh, but shout out to our friends over here at Spot Gamma. Let's see what we got done. Uh, so the options were pushing with the price, but now maybe topping. Let's just give this a bit more time. Let's split this one really. Eh, no, I like it better this way. My fat head doesn't block it. Um, so yeah, let's let this cook a little bit more. There is apparently a hedge wall on the SPX, the actual S&P 500 up here at 4715. So be a little bit cognizant of that. The SPX is currently trading at 4703. So it might just get smacked here and continue to sell off. Remember the trend, the five, the 10, the 30 on the S&P 500, the five, the 10, the 30 on the NASDAQ 100 are all down. Um, so I think even, even though all my trades today were actually bullish trades, remember I was doing scalping. I was doing highly leveraged scalping. Um, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. I had Coinbase up just to track what was going on in crypto. Uh, good morning, Matt. Quick question with Apex. Is there a reason why you chose the 50,000 account and not the higher account on Apex? Dude, this is a phenomenal question. Uh, yes. Let me show you why. So once again, this is pinned to the top of chat in the uh, description of the video, but more importantly, in 14 hours, it's going to go from 80% off to only 71% off. So if you're interested in it, obviously I implore you to spend less money. So the reason why I pick 50K over 25, 75, 100K, it has the best ratios. So what I mean by that is 50K, you can trade 10 contracts, but something like 100K, it doesn't double up. You can only trade 14. So on a linear basis, you can trade more contracts um, in terms of the money you need to make that actually it's a little bit better, I believe, on the 75K in terms of ratio. So 
Uh, I was looking at just all the ratios of the amount of contracts you could trade, the profit goal, and the trailing stop. Uh, but also in terms of costs, like I thought 25K was kind of small and the ratios are really bad over here. So it's just like, okay, which one are the ratios reasonable and cheap? Because this is 167 base, but once again, 80% off. So it's like $33. This is a bit more expensive. This is a bit more expensive. It goes higher and higher. And as you continue to go higher, the ratios are like, how much can you trade? What are you going for? I would argue that it's optimal at 50K. But once again, that's opinionated. It depends on like what you're focusing on. Do you want to trade more contracts or like the, how do things like linearly, like right here, look at the trailing threshold. It's only going up by 250, but you have to go for even more profit. So to me, that's why I didn't do the 75K because the ratio of the profit goal to the threshold was like not in your favor on the 75K. Um, on the 100K, it was everything was doubled or actually no no it wasn't doubled the profit target was doubled 6k versus 3k the trailing threshold was 2.5 and right here it's three so it was a tighter th trailing threshold and you could only trade 14 contracts so i guess like in my mind when i was breaking down all these i thought 50k not only did i thought okay like this is a good price but in terms of the ratios of how many contracts you could trade, your profit goal and your trailing threshold, looking at that ratio, I thought 50K was optimal. I thought it was a good sweet spot. Uh, but obviously do whatever you think is best. I'm not saying because it's best for me, it should also be best for you. No, no, no. It's just like the way, I don't know, I've been able to do it myself. I was, I was finding the most consistency there. Uh, do you still have to pay every month once you pass the test? No, because your account switches. You you go from an Apex account to a PA, a performance account, Apex account. So you'll switch over. And then when you do that, you have the option to pay a one-time fee or you could still pay a monthly fee, but it changes a little bit. So do you pay monthly? No, because you're actually switching to a whole new account. Like the day that you pass the test and everything, that evening they email you and they're like, okay, hey, do you want to switch your account over? Yada, yada, yada. So you don't keep paying monthly for that original one. Uh, because you're going to a whole new account. Is 2K the max pullout for any account value that is 50K account? For any account that's a 50K account, you could take out 2K twice a month. So every month you can take out 4K. 2K, yeah, yeah. So there's two request periods, like the first of the fifth of the month and the 15th to the 20th. So there's two time periods where you could request money and you could do 2K each time. So 4K a month. And then after three months of trading, then you could take out as much as you want. So it's limited for the first three months. So basically it goes this way. You go from a simulated account with completely fake and it's all sim and you're passing the test. Once you pass the test, you then have a PA account where you can do two pullouts of 2K a month. After three months of trading, if you don't blow your account up from there, then you could take out as much money as you want after three months. So is it 8K for the 100? Uh, it's somewhere. I don't know if it's 8K, uh, but it is higher. Obviously, the smaller accounts are smaller. The bigger accounts are bigger. I don't know if it's perfectly linear. Um, what is the test like? The test is, can you, on the 50K account, once again, all the proportions are different, but I only, I only really use the 50K account, so let me just use this one for the example. Uh, you have to make $3,000 of profit without suffering a 2.5K unrealized drawdown. The fact that it's unrealized makes it a little bit more difficult than a, a realized drawdown, so that's like kind of the tough part. So you need to make 3K in profit without having a 2.5K drawdown, unrealized. Uh, and I think you also have to trade on on seven different trading days, maybe six different, maybe eight different. I think it's seven. So you have to trade seven different days, make $3,000 in cumulative profit without suffering a 2.5K drawdown. So it scales. Yeah, it scales. How do you fail the test? How do you pass the test? You fail the test if you have a 2.5K drawdown uh, before you make a 3K profit and you pass the test by trading for seven different days making 3K in profit without having a 2.5K drawdown. And once again, those are all the metrics for a 50K account. It does change if you get a smaller account or more uh, a bigger account. All 
are they paying you to say this? No, I have no. <laughs> uh, I'm an affiliate, but I'm an affiliate the way any one of you guys could be an affiliate. I'm not sponsored. I actually tried to reach out to the company for a sponsorship and they never responded. So no, uh, it, it, if you follow that link, if you use my code, it does benefit me, but it benefits me the way it would benefit any of you, like just an affiliate deal. Um, I, I wanted to get sponsored by them because I use their products so much, uh, but they just literally never responded. Um, would you try any other prop firms like FTMO, TFF? I would try anyone. Like I said, I, I have no allegiance to this company whatsoever. Like I just did it because when I first, like I only learned about prop trading in August of this past year. And I asked people, I'm like, Hey, what's your favorite prop firm? And someone in comments said, try Apex. So I tried Apex. Then someone else tried, said, try stop top step. So I tried them. And then I liked Apex a bit more just because at that time they were running a, a better deal. It was cheaper for me to take the test. So I was like, oh, I'll just do it then on this one that's cheaper. And the rules were uh, like 95% the same, 97% the same. So I was like, well, if I'm doing the same thing and then this one is like currently running a better deal. So I just started using Apex more. But like I said, I have no allegiance to any of these people. Like I'm not sponsored by any of them or anything like that. So if you have a better suggestion, dude, let me know. More than happy to use it and test it out and see what I like more. Um, definitely not a paid sponsor like any of them, like whatever. They just give you a, like a, Hey, get your friends to sign up and you guys are all my friends. So like, Hey, why not? Uh, try them all. This is the, Oh, supernova. You tried them all. It's hundred percent of you systematic trading. I agree. I like just some tips. I don't think it's good. Um, to like, especially when you have a PA account to be taking quote unquote big swings. The things that I've seen that like really work in the world of prop trading because of the drawdown rules is going for like a small to medium amount of just like little scalp trades, like little, just hit little singles. Don't go for home runs. If you want to go to a, for a home run to, I guess, try to pass the test quickly. Okay. Like maybe you'll get lucky. Um, but it, taking big swings, like, it doesn't matter if you hit 99 of them because on the hundredth one, if you have that drawdown, you're screwed. So uh, just tips of what I've learned after trying to pass this test many, many, many times uh, is it seems better to just go for little singles, like go for buns, go for singles, and they just add up over time. That's my tip. Obviously do it however you want to do it. Um, but that's just, I'm just letting you know where I personally found success. Uh, margin accounts, how does it work if you lose money? Obviously, you pay interest until paid back, but then does it start immediately or after? Depend on the broker. For for Apex stuff, this isn't this is just a prop account. It's not a margin account, it's not a cash account. It's it's theirs. It's their money. And the only risk to you is that monthly fee. Like you're not, I'm not risking 50K. That's what I like about it, is I'm not risking my own money. The only money I'm risking is the monthly fee, which right now is like 30 bucks. Um, so like if you blow it up. It's not like you're paying even more money. Um, so it's not a margin account for you. It's not a cash account for you. It's a prop account. And if you have like specific FA, like it just go check out the website or check out other ones, websites to read about it. But just in general on margin account, oh, just in general on a margin account, how does it work if you lose money? Obviously you pay interest until paid back. Most margin accounts, you're not trading more money than you have. Most brokerages cut your, they margin call you before you go below your account value. I've never, ever really traded in an account that is allowing me to have more exposure than the money I have in the account. Yeah, they might leverage it up, but as soon as it pulls back X amount, they margin call you because they don't want to take on the risk as a brokerage. So most of them, most brokerages have a very, very diligent risk department that even if you're using a leveraged amount of money, most of them force you out of your position before you lose more value than your account is worth. If that, how do you lose the PA account? Um, basically going down, like if you run it up, uh, they like, so you start at 50K, you restart at 50K, 
And once you run it up, you can never have it drop below. I think it's technically 50,100, but I just think 50,000 in my mind. You're never allowed to come down uh, below 50,000 um, on that first push up. As soon as you exceed 52.5 thousand, as soon as your account is worth more than that, you're never allowed to drop down below $50,100 again. I just think 50,000 though. It's the same thing. Um, but so in the PA account, you have a bit more leeway because if let's say you run it up to 58K, you now have an 8K drawdown before you blow it out. If you run it up to 60K, you now have a 10K drawdown. If you run it up to 75K, you now have a 25K drawdown. Basically, they just want to keep you above your like initial value. Um, FTMO is the industry standard, but the challenge is a bit different. Two phase evaluation, 8% target, then 5% with total loss limit, 10% and daily loss limit. What makes them, I, I like, I truly just don't know. It's like, so I'm earnestly asking what makes them the um, industry standard? Uh, how does Apex get paid subs? You stated that you could take out 2K twice a month. It's basically a paycheck. Oh, oh, because um, later, uh, like, so you keep $25,000 of your initial pullout money. And then after that it becomes a 90-10 split. So obviously Apex is getting money from the monthly fees, like for the tests and everything. But beyond that, they like they want good traders because you're trading their money and you're in a 90 10 uh split agreement with them. So if you make 100 grand, you're actually making 90 and they're making 10 grand. Um but also with that being said, you keep the first 25,000. So you keep 100% of your first 25 grand and then everything after that is a 90 10 percent 90 to 10 per percent split where you keep 90% and they keep 10. Um so they make money the way anyone makes money trading is off the profits. It's just like you're in a profit split agreement with them. Uh, they're just one of the longest running in good market conditions. Gotcha. And what was that? FTMO? I'll look into it. More than happy to look into it. They also lock in 100. That's why the limit. Yeah. Hawking's name is actually in the court recorded documents. He, his name, but nothing about <laughs> naked midgets, which is where the internet is like running with it. Is that basically the paycheck for trading on Apex? No, it's the like actual money. And I think that's the big change after three months is like the live orders and stuff. Because at first you're starting with a SIM account, but eventually if you continue to trade well, they send all your orders like legitimately to the R uh, like to the market, you're just using their money for it. Uh, all right, cool. Well, thus far, hang on. Options market. Options market dipped hard and the price didn't. That's a weird change. Uh, options market has been going down since 945, but price somehow is going up. So it'll be interesting to see who's right is the equity market right or is the options market right um that's an interesting interesting divergence right there dude i have way way too many tabs open um spy continuing up q's continuing up so the spy the five minute is successfully above the 48 ema trying to flip the cloud back over the 10 is battling it out so for me i wouldn't necessarily be like yo i'm bullish on the day until I see the 10 minute get above, close above. And really, I would love to see the 30 minute even testing its cloud flip. Um, so the NASDAQ a bit weaker, once again, on a relative basis, the five minute isn't even testing the 48 EMA yet. So a little bit of bullishness in the overall market, obviously not because of tech. Uh, Energy is not looking good. Financials are looking good. So if you're looking in the S&P 500 and wondering like what's going up today, it's XLF, it's the financial sector. Uh, utilities are also looking good. Healthcare is looking decent. Industrials, if it ever loads, if it ever loads, if it ever loads, if it ever. These schnozberries taste like schnozberries. Industrials are looking good too. So things are being led by the financial sector. Uh, tech not looking the best right now. Tech 
is actually kind of stopping the spy from really moving but utilities are good healthcare is all right industrials energy so energy and tech xle for energy xlk for tech those are the two weak sectors utilities and financials are looking good um so it, it's the battle of major industries we'll see how things play out but bitcoin's looking good almost actually getting back to 44k it got to 43.8k so uh, we're seeing a nice recovery in the world of tech what are the clouds i'm using these clouds they're for free uh they're from a pretty cool dude uh s-a-t-y Sati pivot ribbon they're free on trading view uh he's a coder he's a tech dude i talk to him every once in a while he's a cool dude but yeah he put it out for free just to give back to the community i like using them I, i'm a big fan just because it makes like they're just emas like there's nothing like really special to it they're normal exponential moving averages what he did was he figured out the code for the coloring so you could visually very quickly tell oh bearish oh bearish oh bullish um, I like that bearish, bearish, bearish. So it's just like a quick, a very quick visual way to tell what's going on. Apple is closing as a company, right? No, Apple, the world's leading company is not closing. Matt, and I'm annoyed at the MJ direction. It always teased around elections. Yeah, that's just because, uh, Every politician is like, well, I'm going to legalize, I'll federally legalize marinara. And then they don't. So it's, I, I think the industry eventually does super, super well. It's just like right now, it's not, it's not like a political hot topic right now. So it really, it, it's, to me, it's tough because like the fundamentals aren't the best of it because these companies are struggling because they're not getting approval. The technicals are way over. To me, it's a political play. So eventually I do think it does well. It's just really tough to predict when because you're betting on politics. And when it like politics always works in the way of like, there's like the new shiny object. Circa 2018, like jazz cabbage was the shiny object, but then it just lost political traction. And now no one really talks about it. Um, so we, you just kind of have to wait and be patient for it to become like the it thing again. So instead of using your red, white, and blue bands, you have the, it's quicker. Yeah, pretty much. So my red, white, and blue were also just three EMAs. I always liked using EMAs. It's just like, I like the, the cloud coloring just cause it's like very visually like, uh, I don't know, appealing to look at, uh, Bitcoin's moving right now. Maybe going back up to 44. All the Congress people need to build their positions before they leave, guys, most likely. Ooh, AMC just hit a new all-time low. Profit, I appreciate you sharing that, uh, but as the local profit to the community, do you think it's going to hit another all-time low, or is this it? How's Mullen doing? Be probably worthwhile to fucking bet against. Look at all these reverse, reverse split, reverse split, reverse split. Such these are all trash companies with trash leaders. AMC's leader, Adam Aaron, is a scumbag, scumbag, scumbag loser. David Mishery of Mullen, he is a scumbag, scumbag, scumbag loser. These are all scumbag people. Uh, 10 a.m. What announcement just came out today? Something just had to happen at 10. Which one is it? I'm mixing up mine for tomorrow. Uh, profit, do you know what just came out? It's probably on investing. Today, 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 9.45. Did something just came out? Is it, is my issue, was it some sort of only double implication? We just saw a big movement at 10 a.m. for some reason. I'm not seeing anything scheduled for 10 a.m. Does anyone know what just happened? Uh, Matt, you smoked the jazz cabbage. Uh, I'm actually doing, I don't know if I'm doing, thus far I've been doing sober January, dry January, sober January both of them all of them uh i don't know if i'm gonna stick to it it was more of a function that i messed up my back and i don't really like to be impaired when i have other body pain because it then prompts me to go do other stupid stuff and make my injury worse so no i'm trying to be dude i'm trying to be good this year i really am i'm trying to be a bit healthier i'm trying to 
uh, abuse less alcohol. I'm trying to go to the gym more. And most importantly, I'm trying to like be more of a disciplined trader. And I really, in my mind, I know this is like stupid and lame to say, but I really do think it all goes together. Um, and you guys might remember I did sober October. So when I, at the end of the year, I was reviewing all my trading journals. October was one of my best trading months of the entire year by like a lot. And the only other thing I know that was going on in October was that I was sober. So it could be coincidental. Maybe the market environment was just good. Or maybe there's something about getting more restful sleep, having your liver not freak out every single day. So I don't know. I just... I need to figure out some sort of like balance because I'm not one of these people that are like, oh, like I'm against that. Like, no, I, I, dude, I'm down to party. Your boy's here for a good time. But is it coming at the cost of me losing, a, like not making as much money or losing money from bad trades? Like blah, 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 blah. So I don't know. I only have one data point, which is basically anecdotal, but in October, I did very, very well trading, like very well trading. And the only thing I can think of that I did different in the month of October was I did sober October. Uh, I did dry January last year, kept it going, coming up on a year and it's worth it. Uh, I've been sober for a year now, honestly, so much better off. Yeah, like, honestly, like I get that people do it for health reasons, familial reasons, all of that stuff. Uh, and like, like I have no issues with that. Like, Hey, all the power to you. But for me, the first thing on my mind is like, well, hang on. If being sober makes me a much better trader. Cool. I'd rather just be a much better trader. Like if that's the trade off, dude, I like, I, I care a lot more about money than I do about partying. Um, a lot more, <laughs> sadly enough, a lot more. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm going to test it out for January and see how it goes. Maybe I'll, and if it goes well, if I crush it in January, maybe I'll run it to February. Like, and I don't know, I don't want to belittle the health reasons. Like, I'm not saying that's a bad reason whatsoever. I'm just saying for me, the paramount reason is I'm a greedy little capitalist fuck and I want more money. So if I can make more money by just being sober, uh, I'm going to give it a whirl. I'm going to give it the old college tried. Um, you guys are saying you're proud of me, but understand this is not for health. Like I'm doing it probably arguably for the worst reasons. Like, I'm like, yeah, why'd Matt go sober? Oh yeah, no, because he's super greedy. <laughs> like you're like, oh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Booty bump Fridays. I don't know what that is, but sign me up. Uh, I don't know what Booty bump Fridays are, but sign me up. Sure, sure. We could do booty bump every Friday. Uh, how would drinking affect your trading? Drowning a bottle of SoCo while at your computer can drink and still be sober when you trade. Yeah, but the issue is like a lot of studies have shown this is like I, I like I never drink when I'm on stream. I'm never impaired when I'm on stream. Um, it's more of like what I think. And once again, dude, I'm no doctor or anything like that. You should not be getting your medical advice from me. Um, I think it has to do with less quality sleep. Um, so there's many, many studies that show like your brain gets rest. You need quality sleep, uh, for anyone who's in the world of the gym or weightlifting, you know, how important sleep is to you. And like, there, there's no doubt about it, that alcohol messes up your sleep. Even if you think you're sleeping for eight, nine, 10 hours, you're not getting quality sleep. So I think the quality of sleep is a big thing when it comes to your life, your mood, your training, your gym, all that stuff. Um, and I'm also not necessarily a person like fortunately who suffers for depression, but maybe for any of you who have anxiety or depression, there's also a million studies out there that says it makes it worse. Like in the moment, obviously a lot of people turn to alcohol to like take the edge off of life, blah, blah, blah. And in the moment it feels good, but in like a long-term use, like it's actually making your depression worse, your anxiety worse. So like I said, fortunately, uh, I don't have to battle with that. And I hope I never have to battle with it, but just, I don't know. I was reading a bit like over the Christmas break, I was 
I don't know, I think I listened to like a Huberman podcast. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting thinking about like the actual biological process. And I was really interested in the sleep. So then I started looking up alcohol and sleep studies. And then from there that led to like alcohol and like not really personality, but just like other interesting studies related to depression, anxiety. And it's like, I never turned to it for that. I always turned to like alcohol just because I was out with friends and we were out late having a fun time partying. Um, but I don't know. I think sometimes at a certain point, I'm not, I don't know if I'm a person, I'm like, yo, I'm going to quit it forever. Cause that's not really my interest. But also like, I think there's a certain point in your life. Maybe this is for people my age or a little bit older, maybe not necessarily younger. You also get to a point in your life where you're like, I should probably just grow the fuck up. You know, like whatever. Like I have no issue with partying. Partying is fun. It's a good time. But then at a certain point in your life, you have to think, I'm now an adult, like I'm engaged, I'm getting married this year, most likely in the future, I'll have children. Like at a certain point, you're just like, oh, I did that. Like, and no knocking on it at all. It's fun. Parties are awesome. Uh, but at a certain point, you're just like, all right, like time to go like do the next thing. I quit because of blood pressure issues. Yeah, that's probably another thing. Alcohol and blood pressure, probably not the best, the best mixing the best mixing. All right. I'm waiting to see how some of this plays out. So obviously the market's popping the five, the 10, and almost now the 30 on the S and P 500 is pushing. It'll be interesting to see how this ends. If the 30 minute bar can push above and hold above this 48 EMA, uh, the five minute on the NASDAQ, the 10's almost getting there. The five's already there. The 30 is still decently far away. Uh, interesting. On the Epstein list, did you notice the comma was not redacted? You can see how long the name is. Not Bill Gates, President Biden, Fitz. But wait, wait, what? I don't think they put President Biden because like at the time, this was 29th. He wasn't president then. Right? Isn't this all from 2019? So he wouldn't have been President Biden. Am I right or am I missing something? I think it was 2019. And um, so president, and I think most of the time they still do like your official name. It would be like Joseph Biden. Uh, all right, we're seeing that 30 minute. So I kind of want to see the close of this bar. The NASDAQ is pushing 5, 10, 30. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I am not a legal scholar. I know m many of you are probably going to be surprised to hear this, but in fact, I am not a legal scholar. I know I look like one, a very press professorial legal mind. Uh, but I, in fact, I'm not just, just your run of the mill degenerate. You can find me at any, at any of your local seven 11s. Is this a recovery day? Tech finally picking up, Bitcoin picking up. This might be it. Hmm. Huh. 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 Hmm. 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 S P X. X. Okay. What else is moving today? So we have Coinbase up three point five percent after getting eviscerated. Coin going to the upside. If this loads, dude, I need to close down some of these tabs. Uh, I guess we might as well do it now just because uh, I'm getting frustrated about how many tabs I have open. Let me tell you the newest, hottest, craziest news in the world of crypto. So if you haven't been paying attention, obviously the big news right now is Bitcoin spot ETF approval, rejection, what's going on. And because of the news of like some people thinking they have an inkling of what's right, what's accurate, we see the market going up. Another analyst says, no, it's not going to be approved. Market goes down. Lots and lots of volatility. Well, just yesterday, we saw that. Yesterday morning, there was a quick drop. There was $400 million in crypto position liquidations. The overall crypto market, really Bitcoin, lost $5 billion. And now if you look at what's going on this morning, it's all coming back and probably to the 
chagrin right here of Mr. Gary Gensler. So here's the skinny on the situation. Spot Bitcoin ETFs could be rejected if the SEC wants more time. So this all happened. This was all gonna, it was all reported because of this guy, Marcus Thielen of Marketrix or something like that. Uh, matrix port. Yeah. Matrix port. Um, no one heard of them before, but for whatever reason, this story got picked up, people read it. So they started to sell. They're like, Oh, maybe it's not going to get approved. Once again, no one knew who this dude was before. It wasn't like he was something like grand slam analyst. Who's always right. Always right. Always right. He was an unknown person said he doesn't think the sec is going to get approved. And his reason for it was he wasn't hating on Bitcoin or crypto to be fair. His reason was it, it's just not in political favor right now because Elizabeth Elizabeth Warren hates it. And we all know that Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC, are buddies. So the assumption was, well, hang on, if the chairman of the SEC doesn't want it approved because of Elizabeth Warren, who hates crypto, that it just might not have like what it needs. Now, obviously, this is one analyst's opinion. And there are, just to be fair, many other analysts who actually think it's going to get approved. But that did not stop a little bit of havoc being wreaked. Bitcoin slumped as $400 million liquidated in two hours so if you're checking it out is around 6 a.m on wednesday the third 6 a.m 7 a.m uh we were cruising went up to 46k coming down a little bit and then all of a sudden this report came out and people started to sell and a lot of people right now for whatever reason i'm not necessarily a fan of it are trading crypto in a leverage manner so like they could get anywhere up to 20x leverage potentially more so a little bit of a drop causes liquidations and margin calls. And that's exactly why Bitcoin went from 45K to 40.5 thousand in the blink of an eye. Obviously at this point in time, just for posterity's sake, Bitcoin trading at 43.8, making a nice recovery. So the cloud, the EMA cloud, almost went bearish, but then obviously it was able to sell its, save itself. So as of now, the market cap of crypto 1.65 trillion recently was up to 1.85. So lost a good chunk there. Bitcoin trading at 43.8 has a market cap of 860 billion. So that's holding well, but other ones got hit a bit harder, such as Solana. So feel free to check that out. Now, what's kind of interesting here is getting reports like this. Bitcoin ETF denial report did not cause 8% Bitcoin price crash. But it did. I, don't, I really don't get some of these articles. A report claiming that the SEC will quote unquote will reject the spot Bitcoin ETF is not what is behind the Bitcoin price crash below 42,000, according to one lawyer, not even a trader, not even an analyst saying, no, that wasn't it. But let's read this and you're going to be like, well, that's the dumbest article I've ever read. I know people are desperate for a narrative, but Bitcoin didn't sell off because some silly report about ETF denial. It sold off because nothing goes straight up and it's an easy grab for liquidity to do a long squeeze. In short, the market was overbought. Well, something could be overbought and remain overbought and get more overbought. That's a bubble. But does this person, does this lawyer not really understand that even in a bubble-esque scenario, once again, for a very, very short time frame, that when you have a negative piece of news, if one person sells, it could cause a bit of a capitulation, especially in a highly levered market when right now people are trading 20, 50, 100x. So we're just a bunch of margin calls. We can see it. There was $400 million liquidated within the tune of two, two hours. So of course there's going to be selling. So this, I feel like this article, like someone just had to write something and like, it just like is in my opinion, doesn't really make the most sense whatsoever. So just wanted to share that because some people are saying it did cause it. It didn't, obviously it caused it, but a bigger picture of, Oh, okay. Like what could actually go down here? Like what happens? Because as I'm filming this on January 4th, this is the start of the window when we're expecting to hear from the SEC between January 4th and January 10th. So I think we should look at both sides of like who's saying what. Obviously, we have one analyst saying it's not going to get approved. We have many other analysts saying it will get approved. Let's talk about in the very short term of what could happen to the price in either direction. Bitcoin ETF looks very likely given the bureaucratic SEC steps. What they're referring to is basically everyone saying that, oh, wow, 
we are going to get approval. Yes, there's one guy saying it's not going to happen, but other people are saying, look at the amount of times that they're meeting with the SEC, literally at this point, daily. Every single day you can open up Fintuit and you're going to find another big crypto. There's about a dozen of these companies who are trying to get these ETF approvals or meeting with the SEC. Doesn't really happen that common to do so many meetings for then to just get disapproved. Spot Bitcoin ETFs could get end of week approval according to Fox. So this came out yesterday and they're basically just excited for like, and they're what they're looking at is the amount of times meeting. From there, we have very legitimate, prominent players signing up to be APs, authorized participants, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs. Just think of all the big banks. An authorized participant, if you haven't heard of that term before, it is the people who ensure like when you create an ETF, an exchange traded fund, it's a basket. It's a basket of something. This basket will have Bitcoin in it. But anyway, that's it's really held together by the sponsor slash the issuer. But you have APs who go out and buy the things that should be in the basket. They're actually putting the things in the basket and then they monitor theoretically what the basket should be worth and its actual worth. And then if they ever need to arbitrage it a little bit up, a little bit down, so it's at a fair, transparent value, that's what they do. Goldman Sachs is in talks to play the key role of being the authorized participant for BlackRock and Grayscale's Bitcoin ETF. This happens all the time. Some of the biggest ETFs actually have multiple authorized participants. And it seems like right now what we have going on is many companies vying to be the ETF. We have majorly BlackRock and obviously, excuse me, Goldman and JP Morgan to be the APs, uh, the authorized participants. And most of these people are signing up to use Coinbase as the custodian. So you need the custodian, where's the Bitcoin held? You need the APs, the people who make sure everything's in check. And that's gonna most likely be JP Morgan, BlackRock, potentially both. And there could be other ones in there. And then obviously we have about a dozen companies who are actually trying to be the sponsor slash the issuer of the ETF. But with everything that's going on, all these meetings, all these legitimate companies with billions and billions and billions of dollars behind them, all the meetings, that's why Fox is saying, hey, pretty soon. And we also know that even if it's not by the end of this week, mid next week is January 10th. So that's the date that everyone has like kind of circled on their calendar. Bitcoin could rally to 50,000 as Gensler faces pressure to approve ETF. At this point, even according to various SEC members, they can't even come up with a reason of why this is still not approved, especially with the fact that we already have a Bitcoin futures ETF. It's kind of insane that we don't have one right now. And it seems to be a political thing. Once again, Gensler and basically him hooking his political wagon to Elizabeth Warren. And then Elizabeth Warren obviously doesn't like it because she thinks all crime in the world is paid for it. And she, as I alluded to in previous videos, she speaks half truths. She makes up facts. She skews data. She is not a fair, unbiased party when it comes to talking about really crypto and its intersection with the government and regulations. She literally just makes things up on the fly. And obviously buddies with Gary Gensler, Gensler runs the SEC. But even with that, there's people right under Gensler in the SEC who are like ripping their hair out saying, dude, how have we not approved it? It makes no legal sense whatsoever. So anyway, in the short term, there are some analysts saying if it does get approved, we could quickly see Bitcoin rip up to 50,000. On the flip side of that, though, there are analysts saying if it doesn't, well, we could see some liquidations and people saying, OK, I don't want any like attachment to this. And we could see a quick drop to about 35. At this moment in time, we're trading about 43K. So it seems like plus or minus 7K is like just an estimate in the very, very short term on Wall Street. Will it be true? I have no idea. Will it be false? I have no idea. All I know is I'm invested in it for the long term. So I'm in it for the long haul. In the short term, yes, I enjoy paying attention and seeing the volatility, but this is a long term investment for me. So, in terms of the bigger view of like where could this go post approval, which I do personally believe it will get approved. Expected Fed rate cuts support bull case in Bitcoin, but there is a catch. Renewed rate cuts by the Fed have historically, uh, pre pre <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> recessions and triggered rotation of money out of risk assets. So what's going on here? Basically, what they're saying is, hey, historically, when you jack up rates, you go coast and then you start bringing them down. At some point in bringing the rates down, we see a big money movement into riskier assets. So money out of risk assets. So, all right, what does that actually mean? There's a catch. Past data source from Macro Micro shows that the early stages of the supposedly stimulatory rate, Fed rate cut cycle 
are often characterized by the economy on the brink of recession and brief but notable rally in the U.S. dollar, a global reserve currency backed by the world's largest and most liquid government bond market. In other words, if history is a guide, Bitcoin may see a brief and intense bout of risk aversion later this year after the Fed begins cutting the benchmark federal fund rate. So it's saying, hey, this will actually end up being good as people just feel less of the downward pressure from the Fed, but maybe not immediately, depending on the market and the economy's opinion, really everyone looking at it of like, are we doing this because we're close to recession? Are we not in recession? And they're probably going to be able to measure that through the movement in the bond market, aka also the yield market, but also the US dollar. So tracking the dollar index, DXY. So that's where we're at right now in the world of crypto. Obviously, a lot of volatility, a lot of movement, a lot of anticipation of what should be going down roughly within the next week. Right now, in the short and in the long term, I'm very bullish. I do think it's approved. I think Gensler basically painted himself into the quarter. And in the long term, I mean, there's so many examples of it, but our dollar is always losing buying power. There's inflation is always going on. And that's what happens when you keep printing and making money out of thin air, unlike Bitcoin, which has a finite theoretical max of 21 million. And obviously it's going to be even less than that. So for me, I'm bullish. I hope to be right. Obviously I can't tell the future, but I see no reason to not be cautiously optimistic in both the short and in the long term. And uh, other, I guess, Eric Balachunas, he's um, an ETF expert. I believe he either works for Bloomberg or he's just like a part of Bloomberg and all that good stuff. Um, talking about how he is also very confident that it'll be approved. So most analysts think it will be approved. Bloomberg puts the approval odds at above 90%. There are some standouts saying, I don't think it's going to be approved. But upon approval, I think there's just going to be a wave of enthusiasm. Of course, there is a risk that it could be like uh, buy the rumor, sell the news type of a thing. But also, if you're not an active trader, I just don't see why it matters. You know, like for me, like whatever, a day-to-day -day movement, it's fun. A week-to-week, -week, a month-to-month, -month, doesn't matter. If you're in it for the long haul, you're in it for the long haul. So short-term movement, whatever. Like it, it, it's fun when it goes up. It's exciting. But if you're not going to be selling anyway, it, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, the Q's got their upside gap fill to 397.89. Push right up there. A little bit of weakness. In, oh, let me log back into this. Let me log back in. And now my Chrome is working faster because I closed out a gazillion different tabs. Try again. Let me in. Hello? All right. I guess we're not going to know what's going on in options right now. Uh, hey, Matt, what stocks are you dollar cost averaging into at the moment? Um, I My most recent medium to long-term purchase was Microsoft. Uh, a little bit before that, I got some rum. I got some Texas Roadhouse. I got some TLT. Those are bonds, but um, those are the recent ones I got. Uh, right now, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of dollar cost averaging when things are super high. Like I, I like to buy when there's weakness and it just makes more sense to me. Um, so nothing too crazy right now. I know I'm going to have to buy soon just because the calendar year is ending and because of tax implications, I need to contribute to um, some like, tax advantage accounts. So I need to put some money in those, but nothing too crazy. I, I'm definitely dollar cost averaging a little bit more heavily when things are weak, not when we're at like all time highs. You know, uh, bu -bu -bu. Bitcoin is the same though. Buying or is it buying one eighth of Bitcoin has the same effect as what does that mean? Bitcoin is the same though. Buying one eighth of a Bitcoin has the same effect as Fed printing. What are you talking about? The Fed is always putting new money. Our money supply is going up. There's new money. And whenever you have an increase in supply, that inherently means value has to go down. Demand stays the same. Supply goes up. Price has to drop. That's the equilibrium of supply and demand. Uh, that is not true on Bitcoin because we know Bitcoin, the theoretical max is 21 million. And I say theoretical because it's estimated that 5 million Bitcoin are already gone, like because of lost keys, forgotten passwords, like it, it, we've all heard crazy stories like that. Um, so it, I, I, I guess I don't know what you mean. Bitcoin is the same though, because buying one eighth of a Bitcoin has the same effect as Fed printing. No, because Bitcoin 
it can't be printed. It's deflationary. It's not in the U.S. dollar is inflationary. Bitcoin is deflationary. What is this one? Matrix port said ETF denied. We dumped ten percent. Two sides ETF approved ninety eight percent. We pumped two percent. Did you guys sue Matrix port? Well, they didn't say actually denied that it was denied. They said they think it will be denied. It was in their opinion that it will be denied. They didn't actually report that it was. Hey, dude, Piper's been on this chair by me the whole time and I didn't realize it. Yo, what's up, little dude? What's up, little duty? Dude, she's just doing little duty things. Little duty things. The tech sector is definitely a little bit more weak. Yo, Pippa. Pippa. Dude, Bitcoin's going almost back to 44K. Looks like the party is not over, folks. Looks like Bitcoin. Look at this. It did quickly flash below the trend line, bounced off the 48, came right back up above it, closed above it, opened above it, pushing above it. Uh, looks like the party still on. ETH trying to get back. So ETH, a little bit of a laggard relative to Bitcoin, but trying to get there. Solana holding came to the bottom of its, I guess at this point, we might as well just set up this trend line and see what happens with Solana trying to get above roughly 110 to 114-ish. Bitcoin vomited hard for two days, opened up weak yesterday, started to push up. Potential V-shape right there. Tesla got hit. Microsoft, still my number one watch right now. It's just the longer it consolidates, the closer it is obviously to some form of an expansion. And I just hope that it's bullish expansion. Uh, NVIDIA kind of actually looking like Solana dropped, caught it. So <coughs> maybe trying to bounce, but not too much movement right now. Netflix got murked two days ago, seeing if it could recover from there. Apple has been getting smoked. This is, if you look at the weakness in the tech sector, it's being led down by Apple. Apple getting smoked. Will the spy be green today? No one knows. I wish I knew, but how how does one know? You know, 44K broken? Dude, Bitcoin's moving. Right here, the bottom right, you have a back above 44. And look at that. Just like that, the losses are forgotten. Basically, it feels like someone just needed a drop so they could get in at a cheaper price. Someone got in at 40.5, bought the dip, and let it rip. Isn't Rumble worth more 5 to $6? Well, depends on how you do it. Value is opinionated. There's no like set rules of something valued. I think Rumble's deeply undervalued. Deeply undervalued. But also, I don't actively trade it. I'm investing in it. I look at where Rumble's going in the next 10 to 20 years. The wheel knows. The wheel knows all, folks. It definitely does. It definitely does. Okay, we got this back. Oop. Hello. Options market is not holding on the spy. Right, that hedge wall we were talking about, four seven one five. This hedge wall is in the options market. You can see a lot of players are centered around that. So price. On SPX is right. We're right at it. We're literally at 4715 right now. So it'll be interesting to see how this, I mean, options have been kind of coming down ever since 1018. So even though the price is holding, it's a little bit suspect. Um, and that's why I, I haven't really done anything yet today. Any reports? Uh, I believe at 1030 right now we get an oil report. Oil should be, I think, a 1030 oil report. Oil's been selling. That's the only other report for the day, though. Uh, how do you sell your Bitcoin if you don't keep it on an exchange? That feels like that might be targeted to someone else. Uh, but I, I know things look bullish right now, but I'm not necessarily sold because the 30 minute has not closed above the 48 EMA. 
and this 10 minute if it comes right back over this might be the old fake out and part of the reason sometimes i'll take that i'm like yo the 10 starting to go but i want the other one to be leading and right now the 10 minute on the nasdaq is not above the 30 minute not even close so i'm kind of just sitting on my hands today part partly because i don't want to ruin my streak i've had two good days or two and a half my apex trades were good this morning um, so i don't want to mess things up for me right away on the options market so i'm just being a little bit more conservative being a little bit more calm being a little less degenerate uh for atnf in the pre-market it spiked almost 50 percent. it seems the only spike in pre market what is that um a lot of these big moves in are not actual trades and you could just cross it with the Oh no, that was a big move. No, that was legitimate. Sometimes you see an individual candle that pops up and comes right back down. A lot of those times that's not real trading and you could cross it with the time and sales to ensure that there was no trades at those times. This is a real move. Um, but I mean, it's a shit penny sock. It's a shit penny sock in the pharmaceutical world. Um, so people might've thought there was an announcement. Maybe there wasn't an announcement. It, It's a shit penny stock. I can't be like a hundred percent against penny stocks because i do personally know people who make a lot of money off trading penny stocks but for most people you are better off never looking at these piles of garbage ever there's a reason they're a penny stock they're a penny stock because they're trash they're accurately priced at whatever x amount of pennies because they are fucking garbage most penny stocks not all but most penny stocks end up going bankrupt as a company uh look at mullen verge of bankruptcy amc seems like it's speed running towards bankruptcy there's like there's these things are penny stocks for a reason yeah it's just for gone postal to more directly answer it probably something was announced or maybe they thought there was going to be an announcement uh but it's a low liquidity stock, which means it's easy to push up or down. The higher, the more, I guess, like liquidity, you could look at liquidity in various ways when it comes to the world of finance and all that. But it, the way I'm referring to it right now is if it's just not being traded much, if it's a low float, it's really easy to get to go up or down a lot in a short amount of time. So one player could have come in and bought like a million dollars of the stock and spiked it up dramatically and then they could have sold it. I forget I gave up AMC after AMC after Adam screwed us. He 100% screwed us. And if you don't think he did, you're stupid basically. And I guess I'm saying the editorial you because I think the people in here right now who have survived, um, you kind of get it. But I mean, go look on Twitter. The only people who still think Adam Aaron is a good guy are like, like are actually dangerously like stupid people. Like they should, should be like mentally checked out. Uh, but, but, but wait, what happened? Second down. Oh, Apple got another downgrade. Uh, Piper Sandler downgrades to neutral from overweight price target 205 from 220. Okay. So both Barclays now and Piper Sandler have downgraded at Apple. Shout out to Profit for sharing that. YouTube chat thinks Adam Aaron is awesome. I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of negativity crap face. YouTube chat used to think Adam Aaron was awesome circa 2021 when the stock was actually squeezing. But now that it's not squeezing and he's continuing to dilute it and letting his like little fucking Twitter minions run rampant, um, talking about how good dilution is, like, admit it. Ape was backdoor dilution. Dilution is bad. Everyone who voted yes on these mergers are like need to get their fucking head examined. It's just he took advantage of very stupid people. What levels on the queues am I watching? Kind of actually where we're at right now, 398, the low from yesterday. If it can get pushing, maybe back up to, uh, so 398, 400, 40250. Uh, and then obviously a breakdown of today's low of 396. So 396, 398, 400, 40250 is what I'm watching on the queues. Uh, but 
really on the futures market, I'm looking to see if this 10 minute can get above and hold above this 48 EMA. The five minutes already up there. Uh, the 30 minutes far away, but the 10 is kind of battling it out right now. If it can get above and close above, we have about three minutes. That's interesting. Um, the S and P 500 because of the financial sector, uh, not really the energy, but utilities, industrials, healthcare, it's looking good. The five minute there, the 10 minutes there, the 30 minute is actually trying to get there as well. So looking to see how this plays out, if it can close above the last 30 minute bar did not, it pushed above, but then got smacked right at the close. So, um, I haven't really pulled the trigger on anything because I don't like this discrepancy of the options market is getting a bit more bearish or you could say a bit less bullish, but price is still holding. So I find this to be an interesting mismatch. Like why is price going sideways yet the options are unloading? Um, if the options were going up, I would have already thrown on a bullish position for sure. But the fact that I see this mismatch and then I see that tech is still weak, something, something feels a bit odd today feels a bit odd and I might be wrong. I might be a hundred percent wrong, but guess what? If I don't trade anything, if I have no position on, I'm going to be a okay. I'm going to be a okay. Oh, uh, what? Yeah, I'm kind of confused. There was once in time when you praise Adam Aaron like your daddy and help people buy AMC. Okay, I didn't help. What do you mean I helped them buy it? Do you mean I told people that I was buying it and then they were adults and did what they wanted to? There's this weird mantra of like, I made people buy it, as if I like broke into people's like living rooms and held a gun to their head. No, it's called being an adult. You make a reasoned opinion based on your current information. At one point in 2020, no one knew who Adam Aaron was. At one point in 2021, there was a bunch of people who missed the boat on GME. They thought AMC was in a similar situation, so they started to buy AMC, and it started to squeeze, which was exciting. And at that point, Adam Aaron hadn't done anything to stop the squeeze. By the end of 2021, the start of 2022, and really every moment from there, as more information has come out, it's obvious that Adam Aaron is against us. So it's this game of being an adult and taking new information. So at one point in time, I was hyper supportive of AMC and thus Adam Aaron because I had no reason not to be and the stock was squeezing and the community was fun. There's a lot of smart people in the community doing and saying smart things and good things, but obviously times change. And if you can't change your trading or investing thesis as new information comes out, what's the point of you being in here? Like, I, I just don't get it. So that's just like saying, like, at one point, I don't know, like, you might be, like, really supportive and, like, th this is a good equivalent. So for any of the Patriots fans out there, football play team, or anyone who knows about them, that's like saying, wow, you were crazy, crazy optimistic about the Patriots going to the Super Bowl a decade ago. Why are you not crazy optimistic about them going this year? That makes no sense. A decade ago, I heard you saying that the Patriots were going to the Super Bowl. I heard it. A decade ago, I heard you say that you were very confident in the Miami Heat winning the NBA title. Five years ago, I heard you say you were very, very confident in the Golden State Warriors winning the NBA final. Times change. Shit changes. Like, I, I just, it, it, it blows my mind that, maybe not you, I'm just like speaking about some of the community in a general sense, the AMC community. They came up with an opinion one time and they behave as if they're not allowed to change it. Uh, it's funny how you were one of the first ones to denounce AA yet people blame. Yeah, I mean, as soon as my opinion changed, I was very public about it. I was like, hey, this guy seems like a scumbag. And then more information came out. I was like, he is a scumbag. And I got shit on for the community. But then guess what? I ended up being right. Before Ape came out, I said, hey guys, this is crazy. It's super suspect. I don't want it. This is nuts. And then it dropped from what? It went from seven to 10 and then 10 to sub a dollar. Like it just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. I'll be honest with you. At one time I had about 500 shares in AMC. I got out and made 15K give or take. There was something that didn't sit right with me right before that big drop. That's okay. I'm proud of anyone who makes money. That's another thing I never agreed with is like, why did it go from being an active trade of we're going to squeeze shorts and then take our money to like, oh, now we're just investing in it. Like, 
if you think AMC is one of the best investment, like out of all the market, we all have finite capital. We all have X amount of money that we could do something within the market. If you argue that AMC is one of the best fundamental opportunities right now as being like fundamentally undervalued, you don't know how to do fundamental analysis. In the entire Russell 1000 last year, in the year 2023, AMC had the biggest percentage drop. Out of the entire Russell 1000, in the entire block of 1000 companies, AMC was the worst. And people are like, fundamentally, I like this company. No, it's fuckheads who are bag holders. And they're just like praying that something happens. And they're trying to get other people to start buying it. So the price goes up so they cannot keep holding their bags anymore. They're scummy people. Like they're just not being honest. There's a handicap. He walks on children. He's a preacher. He's been, oh, that Bishop guy. Yeah. AMC kicked out a handicapped person because he brought his like own chair or something. Yeah. Because guess what? The CEO is a scumbag. Like I, I've said it before. It's not good. Like based on current information, he's a scumbag. All right. Uh, but we don't need to talk about that. We're just beating a dead horse at this point it's hitting a new all-time low i would not be surprised if it goes to bankruptcy in the next couple of years the fact that people are still on amc is crazy it's insane think about all the good information that they are or all the good opportunity that they're missing right now by being focused on amc think about all the money that they're missing out on by like spending their time talking about AMC, being involved with AMC. It's, I don't know. I, most of the time, I just think I should li literally never acknowledge it again because it's a waste of my time. It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of everyone's energy. It, it, it's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. Uh, bu 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 All right. Yeah, let's give this a lesson. Here we have a clip of Anthony Pompliano explaining why Bitcoin is the best show on earth. Wall Street is getting invited in anticipation of the greatest show on earth, right? Bitcoin has been the best performing asset for the last 15 years, and Wall Street's basically been boxed out of it. They haven't had access to this asset. And so I think that's what you're seeing in that pent up um, excitement. One thing that I do caution these Wall Street investors is you can't trade this like other assets. We saw just yesterday about a billion dollars of open interest got wiped out. The guys over at Reflexivity Research did a fantastic job outlining saying, you know, this asset in 2021 went up almost 800% from uh, before the pandemic started to the kind of the top of the market. Yeah. During that time, there was five 30% drawdowns. If you're going to try to get levered long and think that, hey, ETF gets proven, this thing just goes to the moon, you're likely to get shaken out or get liquidated. That is really good advice. Just beware the volatility. That comes I mean, this thing is, is on a risk return basis. It's the by far the most attractive asset in all the financial markets, but it comes with tons and tons of volatility. And so if you go back to 2017, it was $1,000. 45x since 2017. But along the way, we've had two 80% drawdowns. A plus, I can't even count how many, you know, 30 plus percent drawdowns. And so Wall Street is saying, hey, the ETF's coming. Here we go. Now, I do think over a long period of time, Bitcoin's price is going to continue to go up. We're going to have a persistent bid from all these ETFs. Another thing people aren't talking about, everyone's talking about the primary uh, fund flows. So retail or institutions buying this ETF. But actually what we're starting to see now is other publicly listed funds or ETFs are changing their prospectus to say that they can put up to 15% of their AUM in the Bitcoin uh, ETF. So if you have the best performing Some asset, more you get an ETF that's this lagging, fund. That why makes would sense. you not put you Bitcoin know, in your ETF? But all of this really formalizes the greater fool aspect of why Bitcoin should go up, right? It's just, there's more, there are more people who are going to get in there and buy and they have a new easy way to do it. Meanwhile, it, it's easier to own Bitcoin directly than it was to own a barrel of oil or a gold bar or a futures contract. When those things were introduced, it didn't change the overall price curve. I think there's two points you're making. First is when you buy the CTF, you are not buying Bitcoin. You were buying exposure to Bitcoin. But if you want to actually own Bitcoin, take self-custody, you should definitely go do that and not do it through the ETF. The second thing, though, is this kind of greater fool theory. One thing I always say to people is, what is the most valuable commodity in the world? Wow. In my opinion, is computing power. 
Bitcoin is the strongest computer network in the world. And so when you're buying Bitcoin, you're buying an asset that is backed by the strongest commodity in the world. So when you start to think of it from that perspective, yes, it is internet native. Yes, it is for this kind of digital generation. But those people don't look at oil or gold or anything else as the most valuable commodity. They look at computing power. And that's why Bitcoin is so attractive to them. Can I ask you a very simple question? If I own Bitcoin through an ETF, do I have greater protection of my ownership of that Bitcoin interest than I did? through some of the exchanges where I've heard some nasty stories? So it, you definitely have the exposure, and obviously it's a regulated entity. Uh, you have the ETF structure, all the things that I think Wall Street really enjoys about the protections of those regulated, uh, regulated funds. Uh, what you don't have, though, is direct exposure and ownership of Bitcoin itself. So one of the beauties of Bitcoin is similar to cash. You can go to the ATM, you can take the cash out of the machine. With Bitcoin, you can actually take self-custody. You can own it. You don't have to rely on any counterparty. You don't have to rely on an exchange. You don't have to rely on an ETF uh, provider, etc. And so people have to ask themselves, what is my comfort level? Am I comfortable taking self-custody or do I just want the financial exposure and I don't want to deal with that? And I think that that's where you're going to see a lot of people who've been sitting on the sidelines, institutions, they can't take self-custody. They need the ETF to be able to actually allocate to the asset. Hey, Anthony, the Coindesk, the block, a lot of different places are reporting on this matrix port report um, from an analyst who says that the SEC is going to say, forget it. They're going to reject the ETF, the spot Bitcoin ETF proposal. I know you think that's a real long shot. What would happen if, if they actually did do that, if the SEC said no? If they approve it, I think that there will be a lot of short-term volatility and we'll kind of get right back on track, whether it goes up or down after the approval. If they reject it, I think the same thing would happen. There would be a lot of kind of short-term volatility and we'd get right back on track. The beauty is with Bitcoin, if we go back, we, we saw something like this. China had over 60% of all mining inside of their borders. They completely banned mining and kicked them all out. 50% of the hash rate went offline. By the end of that year, May of 2021 is when it happened. By the end of 2021, mining hash rate was back to an all-time high. And so this thing is just resilient, it's anti-fragile, and it continues to just do what it was designed to do. But that's true, although the risk reward, you know, the, the, the that's returns good commentary based on how uh, anti-fragile it is. That's actually really it really depends on the starting point, right? I mean, two and a half years ago, you were here, you were saying $100,000 really soon, we're going to get there on Bitcoin. And it's been nothing through this inflationary spike and a Fed tightening cycle. I always say, look, at $8,000, right? I thought I was going to 100. It only went to 70. I was off I was off by a little bit, right? Um, but, but in terms of, I, th I think, these directional moves, again, it goes back to there is a lot of volatility here. Yeah. And I do think that the volatility will dampen as, obviously, ETFs and kind of more persistent sticky holders come into the market. But remember, we not, aren't just talking about an ETF either. We also have the halving that's coming up at the beginning yeah. of Q2. And we've got to return back to loose monetary policy. And so I think that we're going to see a pretty a significant move in Bitcoin. Just don't expect it to go from 45000 to a million in tomorrow. Right. Gotcha. All right. Well, we'll manage our expectations accordingly. Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate it. A couple of things I want to add on to that. Uh, right at the end there, he brought up like the volatility of Bitcoin. And if you look at crypto, it's crazy volatile, including Bitcoin, the grandfather of them all. But the fact that he brought up sticky holders, that makes sense because all of a sudden as ETFs get into it, pension funds, these are people who aren't like degenerately day trading it. So when you have bigger players holding a bigger position and it's just being held, yeah, of course volatility is going to come down. And is this just like an opinionated thing or do we have some evidence for it? Yes. Look exactly at what gold did before it was a spot, before there were spot gold ETFs, before it, gold was crazy, crazy volatile. We've seen this historically where there's massive volatility, spot ETFs are created, big Wall Street institutions can get involved. They do. And then all of a sudden, the volatility calms down. Of course, there's still volatility, but it's just not as extreme as maybe we're currently seeing. So Anthony Pompliano, I fully agree with him on that particular note of just like, yeah, as this happens, maybe craziness at the start, but overall, year from year, the volatility will probably calm down as Wall Street really gets not only regulatory clarity, but really money within the actual asset class. Interesting. Did Jeffrey ever talk to you about Bill Clinton? He said one time that Clinton likes them young, referring to girls. Well, that's disgusting. Hey, that's something that's disgusting. Hey, that's something that's absolutely disgusting. What else are we missing today? How's the market looking? Are we picking up? Yes, we are. Couple alert. AMC hit a new all-time low. So that's, hey, that's something. 
This is 9.30. Give it them a little bit. Do I want to take this trade? Do I want to do it? Do I want to do it? All right. Let's see what SPX verticals are trading at right now. Verticals. Do, do, do. Hmm. <laughs> do I want to do this? We'll see if I get a fill. All right, where are we at? Where's the zero DTE do, 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 trading? All right, what do we have? Spy, spy put credit. Seven. Ooh, got my fill on SPX. Uh, six, three ninety five. Just putting all the trades into the Discord right now. All right, let me take a picture of my trade. Hopefully we hit again today, but I kind of like doing this live with all you guys because you guys see that what I'm doing actually happens live and then I'm putting in the discord none of this like bullshit Monday morning quarterbacking Not the way to do it in my humble opinion that is uh, Download oh yeah typo What the fuck? Uh, a little bit of typo there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, did that. Google knees, let me fill mine in here. Upload file. Here's my trade on the day. All right, I am ideally done for the day now. I did all the Apex stuff, all that, like, Futures degenerate crap. Uh, now I should be all good as long as this sold a bit of premium. Probably need to wait till I don't know about 4 p.m. Uh, Solana is making a comeback now too. Look at that Solana going from 97 to 104 in just this morning session. Wow, dude, crypto's coming back. Uh, what did you get? It's all in Discord. The signal, the signal strength, the zero DTE, and my personal trades. All of it. All of it. All of it. All of it is there. Uh, what are the options saying? Great question. Uh, options actually ended up picking up finally. They were looking weird, but we just hit a new intraday delta high. I uh, remember the, the teal line is the zero DT. The purple line is all expiration. On the left, you have SPX price, but the longer it holds this hedge wall of 4715, really hedge walls, not necessarily rejection. It's just an important level. If you're above it, it's bullet. If you're below it, it's bearish. So the fact that we got above 4715, hopefully it holds it. I mean, we've seen some strength right here, the five minutes above, the 10 minutes above, the 30 minute. I would love for this, it closes out in four minutes. I'd feel a lot more comfortable being bullish if it actually closes above that. Obviously tech is lagging, but the five minute, the 10 minute above their 48, the 30 minute considerably far away. So what I'm kind of interested in is in the next four minutes, 
seeing if this bar can actually close above. Uh, I'd feel uh, I'd feel better for the bull case if that were to occur. I would definitely feel better. Uh, on that note, we do have definitely have some reacts. We definitely have some reacts. Do, 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 do. Uh, reacts, where are we at? Uh, do, do, do. All right, let's see what you guys sent in. I love when you guys send this stuff in. Uh, this home in Toronto, Canada is on sale for 989000 I remember when these types of homes were 250000 Canada's housing bubble is about to pop. Apparently, Canada real estate, little suspect. We're going to be touring this $989,000 house in Toronto. This is so a, a million bucks? Is two bedrooms with one bedroom being in the basement. So three bedrooms in total. All right, so as we walk a in, a million like dollars for this, this place, just because with these smaller homes, it's hard. This has to, to be in like the most popular the area of Toronto, Canada. right? They did a great job. Is this real? Do any of my Canadian or real estate expert people know? Like, is the Toronto so real estate market this really bad? Appreciate is the listing agent putting all of the feature sheets. Um, hood IQ and all that good stuff. Not a lot of agents do it. My fact, no agents do it at all. You can see my Crocs there for easy access to just put off. So we're walking in, you have this area where you can sit, put your shoes. So it's kind of like mud, mud area, not so much mud room. Come on, you hear show us the rest of the house. Your dining area as well as Give here. us a quick, dude, this could have been 20 seconds. That was it. That was it. A million dollars. Crazy. This so if you're thinking about having kids in this economy, um, think again. You literally will have to go back to work minus two minutes after having the baby because this right here cost me $70. Plus I got a bone broth mixed sock paste. $72. The grapes Welcome to were $35. Three bananas, he's already eaten one. What is going on? What is going on? And yes, I was aware of the price before I paid for them and I will never not buy fruit for my kid. Looks like we're buying frozen blueberries from now on. Easy, just stop feeding your kids. Problem solved, just make your kids go on a no food diet. No consumption diet. Can you hear both? You will only hear the word you are reading, really? All right, I'm going to start with brainstorm and then the next one I'll go to green needle. You will only hear the word you are reading. No way. It bamboozled me. It worked. Did you guys go back and forth on that? That what? something maybe i'm just dumb maybe i'm the dumb how did that work what if you read both so i was quickly reading both back and forth and it said green storm like i was trying to read a uh, brain green storm needle like as fast as i could and when the sound played it actually said green storm that's that's, that's something. Uh... That is embarrassing. 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 So it's literally the same thing. Whichever one you're reading is the one that you actually hear. Yeah. What what's happening? Uh, is this another person complaining about the world? Sign me up. Sign me up, sister. So I just had a guy tell is me the that the economy booming? is booming and that the only reason people are struggling is because they're not working hard enough. Well, that's yep. wrong. So for all of us struggling, we're just not working hard enough. Does this guy realize that today there are people who are making thirty to 50000 more dollars a year than they, than they were making three to five years ago, but they are struggling more today 
than three to five years ago. Has this guy walked through a grocery store? Has he seen the price of chips? Has he seen the price of cereal? Has he seen the prices of anything? Does he realize that we have elderly who, in order to put food on the table, are having to go work at Walmart even though they're 80 years old? Does he realize that people who are in their 30s and 40s who do have a job, who do have a good career, have moved back in with their parents because they can't afford the price of rent and they can't buy a home right now because the interest rates are so high and the prices of homes are still high? And then you add on property taxes and then you add on home insurance. People can't afford that. And it's not as simple as go get a better job, go get a second job. It's not that simple. Telling a mom like me to go get a second job when I'm already working a full-time career and I already have a two-hour commute every day, I don't have time for that. Okay, so what? I go get a second job and now I'm never with my children? How is that worth it? Oh, and now I have to go pay more daycare expenses? How is that worth it? Okay, we have a lot of people in this country, in this world, struggling, and the answer is not to bury your hand in the head in the sand and act like nothing's going on. Do not tell me the economy is booming. The economy is not booming when people are Stock struggling the way they booming. are. And I, when I mean people, I mean people that have good jobs, who have good degrees, who have two incomes coming in their house, and the family is still struggling. That's not a booming economy. No, because the economy is not booming because we have serious inflation. Obviously, the stock market is booming and obviously the stock market and the economy are sometimes correlated, but they're they're not always going to be the same thing. So stock markets going up forward looking mechanism. We could also have things such as quantitative easing. Uh, but no, people are learning the harsh lesson that the stock market is not the economy. The economy arguably very much on tilt. It's been on tilt. We've been battling serious inflation for like a year and a half now. And this is what happens when you have a Federal Reserve and a government that is printing money and spending money like no other uh so i mean i don't know even know if this guy is real so like she might just be ranting about something that's obviously possible but if he is a real person he's just uninformed like it, it is a very complex issue uh, but also seemingly simple inflation is bad and pay has not risen at the same amount as cost so that's what happens is people feel this extra pressure but also if the guy is real and then he's like, well, people could work harder that they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. I think it can be true that we have a lot of lazy people. And it could also be true that people who aren't lazy are still in a bad situation because of inflation. I don't think they're necessarily mutually exclusive. Inflation is not wealth. There is interest rates on the only part of the problem in the real estate market. There's another evil. Oh. Uh, for those of you who don't know, before Tim Dillon was in the world of comedy, he actually was in the world of real estate. So he's definitely like knowledgeable on it. The boomers love BlackRock. The boomers will get on a BlackRock cruise with BlackRock shirts. <laughs> the boomers like because the book, one of the problems in the American real estate market is boomers will not sell their houses for anything under a one point six million dollar profit. They just won't. They won't because they like to lord them. They like to lord around them. They like to make their kids feel guilty. They like to go, <laughs> you could never afford it. They like to tell you how cheap the house was when they bought it. It's so and true. And then this is every every Thanksgiving or Christmas, somebody will go, pick this up for 200 grand. Now it's worth one eight. Yeah. And then it's their millennial yeah. kids are sitting there saddled with student loan debt. And the boomers are, it's their last fuck you before they leave the planet. Yeah. They're a it's spiteful so generation true. of monsters. I respect it. But their last fuck you before they leave the planet is instead of selling their houses for, I don't know, a $900,000 profit, they just won't put them on the market. Mm. Some boomers, which is hilarious, that we read the articles on my show, they're actually retiring to bigger houses. They're, they're sizing up. It's sick. <laughs> it's like insane. <laughs> the most important thing for the boomer is to be right. Mm. And that's their main thing. But one of the things that makes them right is what they have. They go, well, how can I be wrong? Look at this fucking house. Mm. Look where we're sitting. I've got 13 foot ceilings. Don't tell me you know about Gaza. <laughs> you don't. You don't know about Gaza. Uh, so boomers, it's your fault. You heard it here first. It is your fault, boomers. What do we have here? We have a couple more. We'll bang these out. Why not? We're crazy. This dog catches a fish while his owner is away. Dogs are the best, dude. Love me some good dog videos. What do we have there? A German Shepherd, perchance, perhaps? 
Maybe a um, Belgian Malawan. All right. Here we go. He's gearing up. He's ge He sees it. He senses it. He senses it. He sees it. He's like, hey, man, the fish is here. You need to, like, hurry up. He's like, all right, this guy's not coming out. It's on me. This is a hard-working dog. Get it. Get it, man. Get it. Get it. Oh, is he just pulling in? Dude, dogs are wicked smart, man. Wicked smart. Pulled in the fishing rod? Dude, we don't deserve dogs. We honestly don't deserve dogs. Dude, pet your dog's head. Say thanks, man. Dude, dogs are the best. Dogs rock. I don't know. The haircut is looking fly. Look up in the camera. Talk like you did in your other video. Hold you to the chest. Report card. I ain't got it. I ain't got an F on my report card. On what? Every report card, right? Yes, sir. An F on every report card. We can give you a amount of chances. He done had opportunities to get help, got internet at the house, and he still turn around. Turn around, Tay Tay. Do a spin, 360 spin. Come on. Come on. That's how he going to school today since they want to show out. Put your report card up, John John. I don't care about you being mad now. You want to get mad and, and act a fool, I can act one with you. Let me see your report card. He ain't got no good grades, a B, a S. No good grades, N's, U's, F's. This is why his haircut like this. Come on, turn around. Turn around. Turn around. That's, this what thugs do. You want to be a thug? Dude, huh? I appreciate You want to get in trouble with everybody else? That's hardcore. You get in trouble at school, right? Okay. Do good, next report card. <laughs> That's some hardcore parenting right there. Today, you have. T today, you have. Today, you have. $244.27. Ice. And 27 cents worth of debt. Oh, you thought you was good. Nah, go ahead and cook that. <laughs> I'm a broke bitch. <laughs> Uh, I'm a broke bitch and I can't go far cause you know I can't afford it anyway can't rely on my own damn money I'm so broke that it's not <laughs> is that just everyone's anthem these days uh we'll get to the rest of them tomorrow I do appreciate you guys sending them in they're always so funny hey the market's still going up quick check here on options Options is volatile today, looking like an EKG all over the place. Uh, are we missing anything here? Spy slowly but surely grinding to the upside. Crypto had a nice grind up, taking a little bit of a breather right now, but buy looking good. The signal strength and the zero DTE trades are in the Discord. My personal trades in the Discord as well. Don't forget. Oh, here I'll put that. I'll pin it to the top of chat right now. Um, remember, if you use the code two zero two four you can get a full month for free. You're not going to have to spend anything. My argument to all of you of why you should do it is I think in the first free month, you can make more than $300 talking with other traders, the signals, the discussion, the private lectures on the weekend, the newsletter, the training competitions. I think you will be ahead by more than $300, which is the cost for the yearly fee or it's $30 a month. My point is, is that taking advantage of this, the free month, you can make more than what it costs. So then there's no risk to you. You get a free month, you make $300, you pay for a year, but because you made the $300 for free already, the year's then free. And then within the year, I think you can make a whole nother year for free. And you just keep perpetually going forever and forever and forever. Um, and honestly, even for the people who joined for the new years, you guys already saw, like, here's my account from yesterday. This is my personal account already up 2k realize and that's using less than five thousand dollars and ex of exposure and then even the call outs the exact signals right here of like what they were i'm going to clean this up i know this is tough to read so i'm going to come up with like a better way to show it but right here 
uh, 2x multiplier, 2x multiplier. Both these plays it. Both of those could have paid for it for the year. And you could get all this for free for one month because I'm that comfortable that you're going to like the service. Why am I giving it away for free? Obviously, because I want you to sign up. I want to shake you and be like, how are you not signing up? It is 100% free for the first month. And yeah, I want you to sign up because I want more members in there. But the reason I'm doing it is because I think you're going to enjoy it so much and you're going to make enough money that you're like, oh, well, it's free. And then if I made the money, I'll pay for the full year. So check it out. Make sure to get the free month. When you sign up on Locals, macros.locals.com, that's how you get connected to the Discord. And that's obviously how you get access to Locals. Uh, use the code 2024. Use the code 2024 when you sign up for a monthly supporter. It won't work on yearly because it's a free month, not a free year. Use 2024 and that's how you become a supporter. And then as soon as you do that, there's going to be a giant button right here that says Goonie Discord sign up. That's how you get into the Discord, this giant icon. If you have any questions, reach out to me, Matt underscore Coors on Twitter, Instagram, or you can email me at media at MatthewCoors.com and I will do my best to help you. Uh, but today's going to be another day of money. Another day of... Where am I at? Look at this. Look at this. Dude, the trade that's already up there. Look, at, folks, I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to fucking shake all of you. The trade today... Uh, SPX selling the 4,700, buying the 4,695. This is already in the Discord. The second I did it, already up $255. And just a second ago, it was up 300 Already in one trade, potentially paying for the year. That, like right here, I'm up 320 I could sell this right now. And I would have already proven my point to you that in the free month, literally one day, but you get a whole month of it. I, I could sell right here. And then I get access for free for the entire year. Not seeing the zero DTE. There's a whole channel called zero DTE. Um, there's like, it, it's on, I don't know, on the Discord. Under under signals, zero DTE, DGEN, strat. Or did I put it in trading? It's in trading chat right here. Um, so yeah, go on. There's general chat, then trading chat. I did at here, so everyone got the notification. I gave the strength of the bullish signal, and then I gave the put credit spread, the put credit spread, the exact levels, and also the multiplier for the day. Um, so it's in trading. I'll put it in the zero DTE right now, but it's in, um, it, I, I put it in trading because sometimes I get too amped up. Sometimes I just get a little too amped up. But anyway, folks, um, that's what I have for you. So sign up for that, macros.locals.com. Use the code 2024. And also, if you want to do the Apex trading, whether you want to be in the trading challenges, in the Discord, we give away Texas Roadhouse gift cards. We're going to give away monitors, some cash, blah, blah, blah. Um, but anyway, it's 80% off. It ends in about 12 hours. So it ends tonight, if you care about that. Um, and that's also in the description. So Apex, shout out to them being the sponsor of today's show. And then also shout out to the Goonie Discord and all the awesome people in there. Folks, that's what I have for you right now. I appreciate all the good vibes. We'll be posting some content later on today. And then we're going to be streaming early tomorrow. We're going to start at 8.20 a.m. Because tomorrow Friday, it's the first Friday of a new month. So we get the unemployment report, which is definitely an impactful report. So we're posting content tonight. We're streaming early tomorrow. I appreciate everyone stopping by. You guys are what make my life absolutely amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll catch you later on. I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope you have a profitable day. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you later. Peace out.